Alright, so now it's time for the main event. Halloween Horror Nights. 26. 26 years in the making for us. Well, I was figuring, actually, this was, at least for me and my own mind, roughly 14 years in the making. Because I remember snatching up that DVD on Halloween Horror Nights. Halloween Horror Nights 2002, uh, which was really Halloween Horror Nights 12. Uh, which was at uh, Islands of Adventure. And uh, I guess it's just been in my mind that they've had this thing since then. All right, I see what you're saying. Yeah, it was probably around that uh, 2002 when I became fully aware of the Halloween Horror Nights thing. Uh, that, and the fact that it was uh, supposed to be the premier Halloween event. It was 1999, the first time... I think, I think we were there together, actually, oddly enough. Uh, the first time either one of us had ever gone to a Halloween event. Um, oh, that's right. A formal Halloween park event. Uh, I know I had done a haunted house before that. I'm pretty sure you had, too. I definitely had. But yeah. uh, our first uh, Halloween uh, in amusement park event was uh, 1999. And then... Dorney and Park, a, right? Dorney Park. It was Dorney Park, yes. Hollow Weekends at Dorney ah. Park back then. That was the first time I ever went to Dorney Park. Uh, oh, okay. So your first memories of Dorney were at Halloween. Yeah. Frankenstein in blue jeans. That's right. That's right. Frankenstein, werewolf, everyone, every monster in blue jeans. In blue jeans, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about that, actually, when we were in Florida, and how I really think that back in those days, it was just... Management would just go to the employees like, all right, we're doing a Halloween thing. Uh, we're staying open for a few more weekends. Uh, you know, bring your own costumes. Just have fun with it. <laughs> Do what you want, you know, just, just no cursing, don't touch anyone, other than that, have fun with it. Yeah. Alright, go! <laughs> and like, that was pretty much the extent of the planning, I think, back in those days. Uh, for the regionals, at, at least. Oh yeah, it was very loose. Very loose and very sparse. There wasn't a lot of stuff, <laughs> overall. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, of course, Halloween events have blown up in the 21st century, in a huge way. And, uh, but yeah, so it was probably a few years after that, 2002, I became aware of the Halloween Horror Nights as a premier thing and something to kind of strive for an eventual ultimate to finally get there and to reach it and uh, I don't know if I ever thought about it at the time that it would take me as many years as it did the full 14 but uh, we did it we finally got there so I guess it doesn't matter now now that we've been there <laughs> shit got real and I'm gonna say I never thought it would happen I really didn't think so you know back when this the, you know, that Halloween Horror Nights DVD came out where they, you know, took you behind the scenes and how they created the houses and uh, all this stuff. You know, I always sort of separated that in my mind. It was uh, this other thing. I never thought I would get to experience it. And I never, I guess, sort of wished to experience it, maybe. Uh, well, but, were, but then yeah. over the years, I uh, got into the Halloween event at a park. Uh, it took me kind of a long time to get on board with this. But once I did get on board, I still never thought about Halloween Horror Nights, that it would ever happen. And, and it happened. <laughs> it's happened. Even sitting here now, a little part of me is still... It's hard to believe. Oh, a now, big part of me is hard to believe. <laughs> that, that we've actually been there and done that. And that now we're home and it's over and... It seems like a dream. It really does. It does. Uh, it's like the classic. It's, it's We've done it here on the show before. It's, we have survived. <laughs> we have survived... Cheesy icons. Yeah. <laughs> we have survived uh, some awesome movie-themed, classic horror movie-themed haunted houses. We have survived uh, some extreme weights, Ooh. some pretty nasty crowds and some pretty nasty weights. We have survived the most rowdy crowds we've ever experienced in any park in Florida, ever. Yeah, gotta be. Uh, rivaled those that we're used to at our very own great adventure. <laughs> and that's a New York, New Jersey crowd, so we expect it. And we're from New York, Ooh. so we know what Rowdy's all about. Mm. But I have ne this is the rowdiest I've ever seen, not just Universal Studios, but any park ever in, in probably south of uh, Mason-Dixon line uh, ever get. And that's saying something. Well, it's, it's Florida is kind of a weird thing. It's like you go so far south, you get kind of north again it's very strange yeah it's like a full circle it come kind yeah. of full circle you're right it's not southern hospitality in in florida but uh because there's so many transplants oh yeah, right you know, from yeah, new york yeah. but also from all over the place but we survived and uh, and we have survived 
everything else that uh, Universal could throw at us. Uh, the top-notch ghouls, all the set dressing, all the near touching and everything that they'll do there, we survived. We did it! We have come back and we're about to tell the tale. So, here we go, here goes nothing. But just right before we get into that, I think we are in a somewhat unique position to sort of explain how Halloween Horror Nights goes down there because mm -hmm. this was our first time ever and a lot of, really almost all Halloween Horror Nights reviews that you will read or hear about are from people that have done this for many, many years. So I, I think it's it's uh, it's it would be different for us to sort of take a, a first-timer's perspective on this. Yeah, I, I don't think you see that out there very much. First-timers, not at this point in, in 2016. Because most first-timers are the youngest of the goers, and they're probably not set up with their own their own website or their own whatever the hell we call this that we do. Uh, <laughs> bullshit. Yes. This, I, I, you know, whatever. It's a show. We could say show. It's it's a bunch of bullshit right. um, that we do. So okay, granted, um, you're right. The, the loudest voices out there are the ones who this is like their fifteenth year straight going kind of thing. And uh, there's a certain amount of jadedness that'll come with that, and a certain amount of taking things for granted, I think, that'll come with that. But I think there's also another thing to add to your point. There's a certain amount of having your head just up Halloween Horror Nights' ass <laughs> and not seeing the whole picture. And because this is the first time we did Halloween Horror Nights, but it's now the most recent of many Halloween events that we've done, we have, we're looking at the whole picture. We, we were really able to compare this to what's going out there at Six Flags, what's going on out there at Cedar Fair, what's going on, uh, we did Hollow Scream, we re-upped on that just in the same week, and even a few other things that, yeah. that, we, that we just uh, have in our minds and in our repertoire. Right, ha Haunted Graveyard at Lake Compounds, the name, a uh, very particular one. Uh, but, uh, but we'll, we'll get into that. That's Yeah, that's a very... Isolated one. It's it's one. It happens at one park. It's up in the northeast. We have it happens to be striking distance for us. We've done that many times. Uh, that's one in particular that I feel the majority, if not all, of the big, well-known voices that do the reviews and keep uh, all the the lore of Halloween Horror Nights out there every year, year after year. They probably have not experienced that ever. And so we have a, uh, I feel now we have a really healthy uh, sample set that we're pulling from where we really know what we're talking about. Yeah, I think you so. I, I, I mean, admittedly, yeah. the only thing we really haven't done now, and I'm sure it's going to be the next frontier, is uh, we haven't done any West Coast for right. Halloween. We have not been uh, in the state of California during the month of October uh, up to this point, just admittedly. Right. So no, not Scary Farm, no Halloween Horror Nights Hollywood. So... Let us begin. Um, what? Right. So you know what? How about this? How about how about we do, kind of the, the broad strokes, the overview, going back to where it started for us, where we were in the holding pen, and then we were let loose the first time in our very first impressions, and maybe then we'll we'll go get into the house by house uh, as a second step. All right. Right. I think let's do that. Yeah. Sure. Let's do it that way. Okay. So throughout this, we're gonna give you a bunch of pro tips if you are planning or if you ever go to Halloween Horror Nights in the future we're going to give you a couple of pro tips now a lot of these pro tips were given to us by friend of the show Surf Dance Chris <laughs> yes and also just by the Halloween Horror Nights guide they actually list uh, some tips in there as well but so, the thing about that is you don't see those until you're already there uh, oh that's true because yes. you don't get your hands on the guide until you're there Right, they don't. They right. They actually hold the Halloween Horror Nights guides until about six thirty or seven, until the event actually starts. Mm -hmm. We actually went up and asked before that time period, and uh, the person working there said, "Oh, I don't know. They haven't given me them yet. Uh, I don't think yeah. they're going to give the them front, out at the front gate. Right. I don't think they give them out till six thirty. So you have to wait till then. You have to be uh, in one of the designated holding areas uh, where they will distribute the the guide." Or um, enter the front gate after the official starting time. So, uh, there are how many, uh, what, four to five holding pens within Universal Studios Florida? 
Um, was there even that? I thought there was only three. Oh, it was only three? Okay. It turned out, I, yeah, I thought there was going to be more. Uh, the one was in Springfield. One was... New York Street, I know that, because that's the one we waited well, in. I was going to get to that last, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the, uh, one was, I think, it's like on the Hollywood Boulevard across from uh, Cyberdyne. Uh, kind of like the Hello Kitty store sidewalk. That side of it, I think, where Lucy used to be. Yes, oh, right. I remember passing And that. the third one was New York Street. If there was a fourth uh, or anything more, I'm not sure. I didn't see it. I think it was just those four, uh, three that I saw. There was, a fourth was the the Monsters Cafe. Oh, right. But that was uh, only for those who opted in for the, the meal, which they do not call Fright Feast. <laughs> <laughs> they may be the only park that doesn't call it Fright Feast. <coughs> That happens in the Monsters Cafe, which is so aptly themed. <laughs> yeah. It's so perfect that they have that, and it's funny, because uh, um, after seeing that... I know during the day, we were uh, in there, and we were both worried that they may get rid of that one day. Mm. Or I think it's even been rumored to be on chopping blocks in the past. But I, uh, once I saw that they used that to, go to, to great effect for Halloween Horror Nights, and Halloween Horror Nights is such a staple for that park, and such a moneymaker, I kind of feel like it's safe. Like, they'll have to keep that Monsters Cafe just because they use it for Halloween Horror Nights. Yeah, they better. I absolutely love Monsters Cafe. Uh, <laughs> I think it's an incredible eatery. I love how each room is themed to a uh, a, a particular type like of a monster genre, movie. A genre. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so oh. I, I just think I just think it's wonderful the, what they did in there. It is really cool. If every, you haven't been in there, go in there just to look at it. It's great. Every time we go there, you you make sure we go in there. <laughs> yeah, that, that's my thing. <laughs> you drag me in there, and but no, and this last time in particular, I think I appreciated it more than ever, even down to. Um, unique tables and chairs for each themed room. Yeah, like they that's changed. Just, that's really great. They cha- they did like unique chair designs for each room. That's really that's that's, that's like a detail Disney doesn't even do. Like they'll yeah. do different chairs around the park, different restaurants, but like within the same restaurant, <laughs> but just because has different themed rooms. Uh, very detailed, and the food, as far as we know, isn't uh, isn't terrible offerings. Maybe one of the two of the better offerings that Universal has, which is the pizza and the ribs. So uh, we didn't eat those in that place, but we've had the ribs in Three Broomsticks. We've had the pizza. We had the pizza at Springfield most pizza, recently. Yeah, multiple locations. Fast Food Boulevard. Yeah. Uh, years past, we had it back in Circus McGurkus. And uh, Universal Pizza and their ribs are two of the best things uh, that they offer. Right. So <laughs> those are both offered in the Monsters Cafe. So check it out. But that was the fourth holding pen, but that was, again, you had to have the, the pass for that to eat there. Right. We tried to go in there, and then they asked us, oh, do you have the dining pass? And we said, yeah. oh, no. The dining what? What? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, you got to go to a did, different holding pen. Didn't I spend enough money? What? what? Right. Uh, <laughs> I'm what? sorry. <laughs> I had to take a third mortgage out? I'm sorry. I, I didn't do that. Right. <laughs> um, no, this uh, stuff ain't cheap, all right, kids? <laughs> No, but it's in all, not. In all seriousness, Universal is still a lot more affordable and a lot better bang for your buck than Disney. Oh, definitely. Uh, but right, but, but but do keep in mind that Halloween Horror Nights is a separate ticketed event. It is something like $105 if you want to go just for the event, or it's an extra $50, $55 to tack on to your regular park ticket. It's a lot of money. It ain't um, cheap, but yeah. But when you're there, you see what you're paying for. Right. You, you do see where the money is going, and and that was sort of relieving to a certain extent. Yeah. But anyway. I, I didn't have any doubts, really. Oh, no, definitely Even not. Even going back to that 2002 DVD, I mean, I knew what the whole thing entailed. So I, I knew I was in for a really special experience. Oh, oh, of course. You know, how special, I didn't know. But I knew it would be special regardless. It is separate ticketed. That's a... um. This is a pro tip I almost don't want to give. This is sort of <laughs> this is a half-hearted pro tip or a uh, it's an inverse. Maybe I should give it in the inverse. Um, don't go to Halloween Horror Nights in September in the first two weeks, and don't buy the Rush of Fear Pass, which <laughs> may be a really great value because <laughs> you can go every night in September for I think it was only eighty something dollars. It was under ninety. Wow. It was less than what a regular night costs once October starts. But yeah, don't do that, because uh, if I ever do this again, I don't want it to be crowded. Thank you. <laughs> what am I saying? We have three listeners, so, you know, you guys can yeah. do it. But uh, no one else. Uh, don't tell anyone else. Right. It's Again, it's, just, it's like a season pass just for the first two weeks, which is 
Oh, an, an it, amazing concept. You can go every right, night it, it, from yeah. opening to October 1st. You can go. That's kind of mind-blowing that they even offer that. Uh, but yeah. they recognize their sort of uh, price tiers and timing, and they've really zoned in on that. I kind of feel it's like the um, it's the coupon day yes. that the lawyer in Jurassic Park mentions. <laughs> right. It's like they know what they've done, and they know they've maybe almost priced some people out because Halloween Horror Nights is so expensive. So they did offer one uh, loophole for those that aren't as well off or just don't have as much of a budget to spend on parks. And the only the only caveat being you have to accept Halloween a little before you're ready. Because it's still September and you're maybe not totally mentally into the Halloween season yet. You're not seeing it everywhere you go yet. But if you can deal with that, then you can get a great value. So and that's what we did. And we had a great time. It doesn't matter. Once it's like oh, yeah. I kinda feel like it's that event and even Hollow Scream at, at Bush Tampa that brought Halloween to me. It didn't matter that I wasn't thinking about it yet. I got into the mood as much as I ever have been. Yeah, well, uh, that, that was a weird thing. I mean, I guess, yeah, just to touch on that for a second. For us, I mean, we live in the Northeast. So when it comes around to October and Halloween time, we're used to colder temperatures, you know, going to parks in long pants oh. and jackets and stuff. Yeah. And, and, and it being kind of cold at night. So to go in uh, to Florida... You know, during, uh, you know, the very end of September, you know, or, you know, even going into the first, you know, very beginning of October, it was still so fucking hot there. It was so humid. <laughs> um, and it was just like summer. But then once Halloween Horror Night started or once Hell of Scream started, you know, it's like I could kind of switch. And um, I, I was able to sort of uh, compartmentalize, you know, that, oh, we're in Halloween now. We're in Halloween mode. And I could sort of switch into that mode. Yeah. And it was very cool. Yeah, I had no problem with it. I did. Yeah. Yeah, it was weird, though, because it was full-on summer days and then Halloween horror nights. <laughs> so it was It was very fitting, yeah. It was interesting. Um, but, yeah, it was still hot at night, too. So, yeah, it, it was weird. But cool. I mean, yeah, e- e- even just to talk about, you know, generalities here. Uh, I don't even know if that's a word. Generality? Who the hell knows? But anyway. It might be. I think it is. Okay. No, but I remember when you said to me, you know, can you believe this is the setting? Universal Studios Florida, a premier theme park in the world, that this is the setting for this premier Halloween event. It was mind-blowing because I actually, for whatever reason, I didn't quite connect that dot at that point. And when you said it, 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 it really kind of hit home. It's just, yeah, a part that we're so familiar with in its regular form. And then that this was, yeah, this was the setting for this pre- uh, this premier Halloween event. Or just any Halloween event. Even if it wasn't the, 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 the renowned event that it is, just uh, being in Universal Studios Florida uh, for this special event and having it run as late as one in the morning or about two in the morning yeah, on geez, the second yeah. night, that was interesting in its own way because it's just it was sort of a weird thing where it's like I don't, I, this is the park that I go to every once in a, not once in a rare while every few years and it's a certain experience and a certain thing that I get here and a certain feel I get when I go to this place and then to have it as the Halloween and with the rowdier crowds it was very different it is the closest I've come yet to having any one of those Florida parks feel like a home park to me oh, based on okay. the how much the frequency that we went to it, it almost every day for the for five days straight I, I almost feel closer to that park than I ever have in, in, yes I will say it that it was very personal I feel yeah. like from from here on out I'll, always, I'll see that park a little different even if I never went back to Halloween Horror Nights per se but just next time I go back I think I'll feel a little more like you know like it's a you home bonded from home. with it yeah. yes to say that yes that, that, that's a perfect way to put it you know I, it feels a little bit more like that like an honor it's like, it's like an honorary home park now for me yeah i feel the same way <laughs> and it's kind of neat I, I, I like it i don't mind it uh all right so pro tip another pro tip here if you're going to do halloween horror nights you you got to try to make sure that you are in universal studios florida you know at, at least a couple hours before it closes which for us uh the first night we did it was a thursday night and they closed at five although i think they closed at five anyway right uh, even if it's friday or saturday I think it's five during any Halloween Horror Nights yeah. night. Yes, I think so. So just make sure you're in the park, you know. I would say by three just to, yeah. just to be safe. Just to be safe, right. Four, you know, maybe, but 
I don't know if the or you already get lines building up at the front gate at that point. You might. Right. So I mean, maybe you know you could cheat a little bit. You could take Hogwarts Express, you know, from islands to studios. Maybe do that at four o'clock. Yeah. yeah. But I'd say no later than four. Right. I, I, we we were we were there even prior to three. We were no, there, no, no. We were there for the whole day. We were there for the entire day. Right. We made sure that we were in that park because you you got to be in the holding pen sometime before five. I think, right? Yeah. Or 5 o'clock is pretty much... You know, or whatever it was. I mean, we, we say that, but, I mean, people were still leaving the park up, almost up until showtime, so to speak. Yeah. Showtime being the beginning of Hobbit Horror Nights. Right. Which at, technically starts at 6.30. Which was 6.30 for the nights we were there. Uh, again, I don't know if these things vary uh, throughout, the, throughout the season. I don't know. But, you know, whatever that posted Hobbit Horror Nights start time is, that's when they make... Uh, very well sure that they get everyone else who's not part of the event out. But yeah, you really want to be, to get the advantage on the rest of the crowd, you want to be in one of those holding pens because otherwise you're going to be in a very long line to get in to the park at the front gate. Uh, and then that's going to hold you up. And then by the time you get in, you're probably going to have a 30, 40 minute wait on almost every house already. So to do it really well and to do it efficiently, you want to be in the park before before the official uh, regular day closing so that you can uh, be in one of the holding pens before the actual event starts. Right. And just to quickly talk about that experience because that was totally unique. Yeah, so we were in the New York Street area holding pen and it was jam-packed full of people. Uh, it, you really felt like you were kind of a piece of cattle at that point because that holding pen really fills up and there is no place... To sit there, you, you can walk around a little bit, but there are so many people in that holding pen. <laughs> and, and, and it's a funny thing is that I mean, it was early when we went one of the early, earlier weekends in September, and I, I think it probably gets a lot worse. Oh, it's not, yeah. I, I, know, I know what you're saying, but it wasn't like no room, like there was plenty of room in the street, but yeah, all, every available place to sit was, was taken up, and there was a ton of people standing, and it was, it was, it was full, you know, comfortably full. I can only I can only imagine what it must be like the last couple of weeks before Halloween, and I would not want to try it. <laughs> oh right, that's okay. I, I'd rather just see it early and and then you know getting it out because uh, I wouldn't want to even see it like twice as full as that. That's that'd be insane. Right, that would be a real herding cattle kind of Oof. moment. So it was just very interesting because in contrast with Hallow Scream at Bush Gardens Tampa, Hallow Scream, uh, you get a wristband. So they see that you have the wristband, so you paid for this event, you're, you're good to go. For Halloween Horror Nights, it's either you're in the park because you paid for the event, or get the fuck out. <laughs> they just don't even want to deal with wristbands. Either you're there or you're not. Even employees, remember we saw um, team members that, that worked at various attractions, you know, walking out. And it's like, if you don't work this event, you got to get out. So that was very interesting to see as well. Yeah, the changeover was fun. That's what we ended up doing. That's what we. That's how we entertained ourselves during the holding pen stage. Yeah, uh, you know, it's cool. It, I felt like I was part of something. I felt like I was yes. part of a big that's event. That's what it, it was. Felt like, you know, it's like a big concert event. Or um, I've been one time to WrestleMania, and it felt like that. It was like I was. I'm part of a really big event here. It had that a big event feel, and I, I, I took that away from it. Uh, more than anything, being in the holding pen, like wow, I'm, this is—it's the calm before the storm, and I'm, I'm part of something, and it was really kind of neat. But yeah, that's how we entertained ourselves for the 45 minutes, for the most part. Um, and then I will say, I did not see, uh, at least at that time, any of the characters get into position. That was kind of magic, the way that happened. Yes, they just kind of appeared. So they—I don't know if I just didn't know where to look. You know, it's Universal, it's not Disney, so I kind of feel like. <laughs> uh, and, and actually, no, I, I, not even just to say that, but just we saw later on where there was some changing in the, the, um, in the shifts and stuff, and it's not exactly seamless, so you do see it. You know, it's not all uh, out of guest view. There are some things you can see. So, but at least for the beginning of it, I didn't see anything. And that was always special for me on this first ever time um, because it made it more magic. So that was the holding pen experience. So, okay, so you're, you're in there from roughly 5 to 5.45. You actually get let Whoa. out early. 
You do. You're in there from whenever you want to be in there, by the way. Remember, we saw the right. first that signs true. as early as, what, four or something? It was really early. Oh, people were, were going in those pens, yeah, very early. So some people waited there for, like, closer to two hours. Yeah. But we got in there right before five. Uh, 5.45, they let you out, and some of those houses open early. Now, that's if you're in the park. If you are outside the park, they will not let you into the park until 6.30, when those lines have already built up. So, be in the park that day. Be in the holding pen. They'll let you out early. Some of those houses will open up early. You can knock off a bunch right off the bat. Yeah, more than I even thought you could. That We went on a Thursday night. That was the first night we went. And I'll say right now, we essentially did everything we wanted to do, more or less. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. We did every house except for two, and we did all the shows. So, In the you, first night. Right. Yeah. So, so it's totally possible if you go at the right time... You can make it happen. You can essentially do the whole thing in one night. Yeah, I, which I, I found to be unbelievable, but it happened. Yeah, this is just, this is just based on what we've heard. I mean, it's not unbelievable in, in terms of uh, Halloween events, which every other one we've ever been to, you know, it's expected you could do it all in one night. <laughs> but it's just this is just <laughs> yeah. based on what we've what, what we've heard and what we were expecting about this particular event would be that you need at least the two nights. There's no way you're gonna do it in one. Yeah. So the fact that we did so well and cleaned up in one night um, was great and was, it was such a relief. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you that, really made yeah. us, that made us feel like we, we came, saw, and conquered kind, <laughs> kind of thing because it was like, wow, we did it. We, we did it. Veni Vidi Vici, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then what it did was it made so that uh, subsequent uh, nights after that, which ended up just being one really, were just gravy, which is bonus time. Um, all right, so that's how it's how it how it sort of pre-start. That's 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 the yeah. pre-start. Okay, so five forty-five, we are let out, we are unleashed, <laughs> yeah, into the park, uh, and that was cool. That was again, that was where it had that big event feel. Yes, um, that was just so awesome to be let out, and it literally is like a switch is flipped. It was that that's that's really neat. Yeah, you hear the siren just right? like that. It's just like. Uh, it's, it's regular part time and then all of a sudden yeah the uh, siren was going off and then yeah. it was just the Halloween music starts the soundtrack uh, kicks up I think those projections and that was, we were run out right into that um, what was that apocalyptic scare zone yeah yeah right yeah. off the bat and like that uh, although it was still kind of light out so you couldn't see if those projections were really working <laughs> yet but like all that like kicks on immediately like it's off and then it's just on it's just that's a, it's just like that and it's just that was cool that felt like oh yeah i was so <laughs> pumped at that at that point in time yeah well it was like the cedar point running of the bulls kind of thing where everyone was just kind of rushing to the house they wanted yes, to get to first yes yes it's like kind of like that but it's like a more subverse version of that because it's like it's for halloween and it's for this darkness and it's like <laughs> we're gonna take this this park and we're gonna dirty it up now and make it dark and evil <laughs> for your enjoyment yes. and it's an older crowd too Yes, Generally speaking. And yeah. it's just the crowd that you're with. So now we're going to get into the houses. All right. right? Let's, this is what we were. We were, we were, running, we were doing running of the bulls or running of the, the zombies or whatever you want to call it. Because <laughs> it's All Halloween. Right. Yeah, let's rip through these houses. For us, it was the classic horror movie themed haunted houses that were the ones we wanted to do the most. As, as newbies to the event, we were the most excited about that. Not, I was also very interested to see what a universal original would be like, for sure. But... Just out of the, the novelty of it, and because this is one thing that we haven't been able to experience yet at any other event, we were both very interested in seeing uh, movie houses, movie themed houses. And of course, you, uh, even a little more so than me, I don't, do you want to give a little background on yourself? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge movie buff in general, uh, but I do uh, particularly love horror films. Uh, and for the month of October, I do a horror movie a day, and uh, even for this event, I did my homework. So they had houses themed to The Exorcist. So I made sure to watch all of The Exorcist films, one through five. Texas Chainsaw oh, Massacre. Ooh, that's a rough one. I, I mean, I, I just re-upped on the original. All right. And the remake, the 2003 remake. Um, I, I've seen all the other ones, but I just re-upped on those two. Uh, Halloween 2, I made sure to re-up on Halloween 2. And Krampus, I had already seen in theaters, uh, so I feel like I didn't need to re-up on that. Uh, American Horror Story, I've never seen. Walking Dead, I've never seen. But there you have it. I am a, uh, yeah, I'm a big horror movie fan. I love it. 
I am not into horror movies actually very much at all. And I did not watch anything for this event. But, you know, going with you and and, and your enthusiasm kind of rubbed off on me. So it made oh, me really? also kind of uh, a little more partial to those. But, I, but for myself, too, I, again, that was the more novel thing. Right, because Six Flags doesn't do that. Cedar Fair doesn't do that. No. So... Yes, yeah, so based on what was open right off the bat, because they don't all open early, only some do. It was the Exorcist one. That one was uh, pretty close to where we were, uh, and in the holding pen, and it was one of the ones that was open. So we did it. That was our first one. Spoilers from here on out. Every house we are going to talk about. Spoilers. Look in the description. We'll tell you what time code to jump to. That'll get to our uh, overall thoughts of the event. But spoilers from here on out on the houses. Exorcist. Just to give a real quick background on this, at least for me, uh, I'm really not a big fan of uh, The Exorcist, the original Exorcist, and the entire series. All right, uh, no, I know this is considered one of the scariest films of all time, and even just one of the best films ever made, generally speaking. Is it really? Uh, it really is. People go that far? Yes. I personally don't get it. I think it's an incredibly silly film. It's comical. <laughs> I do not find it scary whatsoever. Uh, all that shit with the uh, the kid being possessed, it's just very, very silly to me. I'm just saying, going into this house, this isn't a premise that um, I really buy. I really go for. Uh, for me, it's uh, the word to describe the movie is boring. No, the original yes. th that it was based oh, on. This is incredibly important. I have seen numerous reviews. Now, listen, I, I do not want to go into all these other reviews uh, about Halloween Horror Nights and compare it to what uh, the general uh, reviewing population has said about this uh, because fuck that. We're doing our own thing here. But there is one thing I want to address. A lot of people have said, oh, how are they going to do an, an exorcist house? Or, um, you know, the movie only takes place uh, in one room, so how can they really, you know, make a movie about that? Uh, make, 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 uh, make a house about that? That is not the case. <laughs> the, yeah. the, 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 the exorcism parts, the parts that take place in that, in that room, that child's room, really only amount to maybe 25% of the movie. The rest of the movie is uh, generally uh, boring dialogue scenes. So they just focused on the possession scenes, which makes sense. But people have a... They, they misremember how the movie actually is. <laughs> yeah. I did still wonder on this particular one how they would do it. Just the same. Yeah. Because, you know, my, my thing is like, what are they going to have a bunch of the boring, like, walking to and from car talk, <laughs> talking scenes? Like, are those going to be a lot of the rooms that you go through? Yeah. Uh, because that is a lot of the movie, you know, yeah. as you said. To, to do it, like, for real, it would almost have to be just, like, you walk into one room. <laughs> It'd almost become more of a show than a house. Yeah. Otherwise, you have to sort of twist it and manipulate it. And, uh, well, we'll get into it. That's what they did. So, B, what did you think of The Exorcist House Halloween Horror Nights 26? This one was... Oh, I think it was just good. Ah! This one... Yeah, you know what? It was great. I don't want to become... <laughs> it's like just because I went to one year now, I don't want to become jaded already. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. already sort of thinking now in my mind comparing this to all of them. But like, all right, compared to like things we've done before, it was very, it was, it was really excellent. I mean, really, it was probably just those couple at Hollow Scream that we've already talked about that were better than it. Other than that, it maybe was like the third best house I had been in up to that point. It was, uh, it was very good. It was even, it was great, I'd say. Overall, it delivered. The The highlights for me were uh, the one hallway early on um, where they had like a scene behind the wall. Yeah, it was It was like a like a scrim or something. It was... Yeah, it was, you know, it was a... It was like a, a see-through wall where they would flip the light and then you would see the... Um, the wasn't it like African imagery? It was like it from was, the, yeah, the, it was supposed the, to take. It was supposed to be the, um, comes the first part of the movie uh, where uh, Father Marin is in Iraq and he sees that uh, devil statue. Okay, which, so which is not even I, Africa, I guess but. supposed to be the devil that possesses Reagan or something like that. I'm not exactly sure. Oh. The movie doesn't make it clear, so <laughs> whatever. Um, but that room was really cool, and then uh, and they did a great job. I, I mean essentially and this was what the first thought we had when we got out of there was like alright I see how they're gonna do it 
They just had like <laughs> they just had like forty Linda Blairs. That's what yes. they did. I remember I turned to you and I said, "Oh, okay, that makes sense." Yeah, because it was just all of the scenes in a row, all of the all of the famous things in the movie, right in a row. They were sort of telling the the last half hour of the movie essentially is what they were doing, and again with with no uh, qualms about replicating the main character over and over and over again. Exactly, that's what they did. They just yeah. did it, and it was one of those things where it's, yeah, oh, oh, that's what they're going to do, and it was almost kind of like a oh, of course that's what they're going to do. Yes, it was almost sort very of like, much. You know, when you really thought about it, I was like, well, I guess there was no other way they could have done it. So okay, you know, which was interesting, but. And, and they project that uh, that image of the uh, cheese in, in, in the original movie. They only show it for like literally two seconds. The devil face, but it, they they projected the face, that right? all over the goddamn maze. Yeah, I, yeah that, was, that um, was cool though. That was too good. Which effect. is actually cool. Which I find creepier than Linda Blair and and you know and uh, Reagan in her makeup. Uh, Spider walk. Uh, they did do that. Yes. What do you think about that? Uh, you find you find the devil face creepier than Spider Walk. Yes. Oh, the spider work is interesting just because technically that's not part of the movie. That was actually cut from the the theatrical release. But if you see the director's cut, it is in there. And I remember we were talking about this afterwards. It is perhaps the most well-known deleted scene possibly in cinema history. <laughs> uh, everyone knows the spider walk. So it's very interesting that they included that in, in the house, even though technically it's not part of the, the official film that was released. The original theatrical cut is yeah. not in there, yeah. Uh, yeah, that is that was weird. Uh, deleted scene made it to a to a house. Yeah, but because like you said, it's, I think it's probably the most famous deleted scene ever. Yeah, so probably is. that's why it's it's in there. They did it all. They did the revolving head. They did the yes. The, oh, the, the floating up uh, off the, the bed, the, the levitating. The uh, you know, uh, the, the the power of Christ compels you. They did that, that. which was very cool. Yeah, they they, they really did a, a a very good job in there. Uh, one thing that I thought that was a little strange was the very end of it. They did not have Father Karras jumping through the window and tumbling down the steps. Instead, you went through some sort of hell at the end. I don't know what that was all about. It was really weird. That was a, t that was a departure from uh, the film. But uh, it was oh. still cool, and I liked it. Was anyway. he the one who was on the bed, like dead, or laying down? No, that was Father Merrick. Oh, that died. was okay. That, that was, was like... Max von Sydow. He dies. Oh, that was that depicting that scene. Okay. Yes. All right. And then they never actually gone through the other. Right. The guy who says, you know, come into me, you know, whatever, you know, get oh, out of Reagan, okay. come into me, right, and right. then he throws himself out the window, goes down steps, and he dies. Uh, they actually did not uh, depict that scene, which I am. I was really surprised to see because that is extremely iconic, mm, especially yeah. those stairs. Man, they really uh, like this. Nostalgia the hell out of those stairs, like in the sequels. Oh, okay. so I, it's just weird that they did not include that in the maze, in my opinion. Oh, okay, but at the same time, the maze was totally cool. I mean, it was fine. No, it was, it was very good. It was great. I, really, it, it's at that point, it's it's kind of hard to say. You didn't include the stairs. What's wrong with you, assholes? You know, it's like uh, no, I mean, they did an extremely good job. What the fuck do you want from them? Yeah, no, it was it was it was really good. And they going through health thing was kind of neat. And, and this is going to be a theme. Actually, throughout uh, the uh, movie-based mazes, I can't necessarily attest to the uh, the TV-based mazes, but uh, <laughs> at least the movie-based mazes, they did not do the movie verbatim. There was a good amount of interpretation in there. It was sort of abstract to a point, and that was so interesting to see. Okay. Because it's not like they did Exorcist from beginning to end and they did all the key scenes. No. Essentially, they did the last half hour. And they interpreted that how they pleased. And it was cool. It was cool to see uh, Universal Creative's interpretation of the last half hour of Exorcist and these other movie-based uh, houses. All right. Cool. So that was overall very good. I want to stop right here. Just a quick uh, point about the, this being our first ever uh, Universal haunted house. I was overall surprised about the general setup of how the houses work. The cues are every bit temporary and every bit revealing in terms of uh, backstage. Uh, you totally just go wherever the hell they had space to put you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or wherever you need to go to get to the back of one of these these houses. A, a, a weird sort of side entrance of one of the sound stages to get to the house. And I don't 
No, actually, I'll say I was definitely not expecting that. I would have thought that they would have, at this point, had some more permanent setups. I would have thought they would have had some permanent queues. I would have thought they would have had some passages, some ways of egress to get to where the houses start, where you didn't have to necessarily just see blatant backstage, like you shouldn't really be seeing this, but you are. <laughs> I would have thought they would have had that figured out by now, and they didn't. And that part of it, right from the very beginning, felt very small. It felt very regional park. Yeah. Uh, because that part of this event is actually no better than what they do at Six Flags or Cedar Fair. Now, I'm not going to say it didn't that it took away from my overall enjoyment of the event, because it didn't. But I'm also not going to say that that's something that they could not do better, because they could do that better. This is Universal we're talking about. They could do that better. And I'm a little surprised that 25 years in, you know, a quarter of a century in, they're not doing that any better still. Each of the mazes did not have some sort of a grand entrance or a fancy facade to it. It was, you just enter a soundstage or a tent and then boom, you're in it. You're in the world. It, yeah. was, like a, it was like a switch. I, I was so surprised to find that out. I thought they were going to build a lot more atmosphere and, and sort of get you you know revved up for it but they didn't do that at all it yeah. was just one second you're not in it you're just waiting you know backstage on some access road that's behind the scenes in the park yeah and then the next second you're in the house you're supposed to be in that world yeah this speaks even to what we saw at hollow scream uh where we talked about the audio track that played before the motel hell not even so much as that Right, right. Uh, I think there was some little bit of audio before that one, the temple one, the tomb one. But that well, was the only instance of that. Even the movie yeah. ones where it would have been easy. Uh, hell, play, play clips from the movie on TV screens even, <laughs> right? I mean, like QTV. Yeah. Anything would have made sense and would have helped to get you in the mood. And they had zero. Zip. It's just a line of rowdy, half-drunk people around you, and then you're in. <laughs> yeah. And that was it. And like I said, this, at least this being my first time, uh, the overall excitement that I had about being there, I guess, kind of held me above that. I could see upon subsequent visits, though, being a little more down about that. It was so strange because it felt like such an event, but at the same time, uh, it felt so temporary. It felt so sort of tacked on at the same time. Yeah. And that's the thing. It's not, though. It's like... They right. know at this point right. that they're doing this every year. Right. They know they're doing they, this right. for like they have the a, next right. whatever, 10 or 15 years at least it's probably already budgeted for. Oh, of course. They have a separate department that's devoted just for this event. They work on this 24-7 for 365 days a year. Yeah, it is, it is really weird. Uh, so, all right. We, we're talking about peppering in pro tips. Here we're going to be peppering in maybe from here on out some um, sort of suggestions to Universal. <laughs> Not that any one of them are listening to us, but if I had of uh, 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 someone's ear, which again I don't, this would be one suggestion. One would be about trying to maybe create a little better queue and uh, entry build up, because that was certainly the weakest point of the entire event. Right. Okay. So next we did Texas Chainsaw. All right. Uh, this is one of the two tent houses. Right. We should say which. Uh, now, we're, I mean, not gonna, we're not going to go into it, but these have a certain stigma about them. Yeah, and we're I don't gonna, think we'll, that's... We'll, we'll leave it there. But. Right, I don't think that's right, and we'll leave it there, yeah. So, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre... Okay, so, uh, you, you see the facade of the house in the... Now, this is based on the original 1974 film. And best, uh, right? Masterpiece. I mean, for me, this is possibly my favorite horror film of all time it, it's it's like that and maybe the shining was those, those are like my two tops wow more okay. or less all right uh so i was extremely pumped to see this house you see the house uh you see the facade of the house anyway uh yeah. it looks pretty much like it like the house in the 74 film it did it all right the only weird thing is you enter beyond the house you go around and you enter into a tent i don't know why they don't <laughs> have you walk into the front door i think that's a common complaint but uh whatever yeah, and, and it, these are, we say tent, but they're they're permanent structures, by the way. Yeah, they're yeah. they're meant to be. If um, this is very local down to us, but if you know, Great Adventure, Six Great Adventure has um, one of these out in the front of the park. Yes, that's right. very iconic. Sort of, if you know that park and like we do, 
It's like oh, anyway. <laughs> it's but, the entrance to Superman Ultimate. Uh, is it Ultimate Flight or Ultimate Flight? Yes. Yeah, you have to walk through it to get to that. Right. The, the gift shop is in there. Well, so. it's, it's always been there though, since like the seventies. So though, but it's right, yeah. open. It's always been there, like their maintenance storage tent. So it's like a tent, but it's like a cheaper permanent structure. You don't actually. They don't cover the tent either, though. It's like you can see the house, no, but you can see no. the tent on either side of it. Yes. So no, 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 no. You totally walk into a tent. They don't it, make an attempt it, it, to cover that up. It doesn't grab you, or it, it's not completely no. engrossing. Again, in, in it's way. like you're not in it. Then boom, you're in it. Yeah. So it, it's still even when they did do a little facade, it's kind of half-hearted. Which again is kind of weird. I mean, I, I guess they're resting. I totally. I th I was expecting elaborate facades. Yeah, this is I know. So weird to me. It, it was kind of disappointing. I guess now, now that we're back and it's over, I could say it. I mean, it's kind of disappointing. But I guess their their mentality is that they're j that, that what they do in the houses is so spectacular and it's the best ever that this is what we deliver. Yeah. And they're just like, we don't need to do the facade. It's just a waste of money. Why do it? But I, <laughs> I could easily beg to differ, especially when you think about how even Cedar Fair at their Halloween haunt is into doing some facades. I don't know if I'm going to say that they're spectacular facades, but just think about that high school one out in King's oh, sure. by the old hypersonic entrance. Mm -hmm. Where they put that, and that's pretty elaborate. Um, oh sure, and it's pretty neat, you know. And there's nothing even close to that in Universal, which is supposed to be the premiere event. It's tough when other regional parks are kind of doing some stuff with facades, and then it kind of, and then and then you go to Universal like we did later on, and it's kind of like, well, why aren't you guys even trying? Yeah. Uh, but all right, so Chainsaw. Chainsaw. Yeah. I guess I'll just say it right outright. Easily, this was my favorite of the houses. All right, there personally you go. for me. It was intense. It got me in the moment, in the mood. I. It, it's really creepy. You really go into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre house. And it's close quarters, like a house would be. It's like just halls, and, and, you're, and you're winding around. And there's a lot of scares in there. It, it was cool. I really liked that one. Uh, a, a lot of chainsaw, obviously, in there. Oh, yeah. A uh, ton of chainsaw, which there should be. A uh, ton of leather face. It's like 40 leather faces. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that's maybe a little exact. Maybe it's more like 15. Maybe it's like 20. 15 but to like, 20. It's a lot. But it's still a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I, that's a theme. That's a theme throughout. Yeah, when you, ha when you have a main character that it's, it's, he's replicated a lot. Uh, but I really liked it. It was really, really awesome. This one, I would yeah. say, is horrific. Yes. Now... Uh, the reason why I gravitate towards this one in particular is because it's sort of more realistic. It's not something as abstract as, we'll say, Exorcist, or like Demon Possession, where, to me, you know, I don't really believe in that. It's kind of well, hokey to a certain extent. There's no magic involved yeah. in, uh, in Leatherface. Right. See, it's just a real murder situation exactly yeah and that's why i kind of really like that is because um it just really exists there are these ridiculous houses full of crazy shit full of crazy murdering people out there it truly exists mm. and i think that's what gets to me yeah well it's it's unsettling actually is what it is yeah. it's like wow this really exists yeah, w one scare in particular that really got me, that oh. I really loved. Now, this was next-level stuff. This is what made Universal a, a cut above. Was there was one scene where Leatherface was uh, cutting into a body that was laid out on a table, and there was a blood spurt. It sprayed on both of us, I yeah, believe, I right? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like, oh my god, what was that? <laughs> and, I mean, you know, whatever, a second and a half after that, oh, okay, it's just water. Yeah. But still, the illusion is there because of him cutting into the body and then the low lighting and all that. It, it's extremely effective and it's really great. Uh, I absolutely loved that. Yeah, it, that was cool. That was uh, the fourth dimension. And another theme that ran throughout all the houses, they were all extremely loud. They really pump up the volume in there. Yeah. So with this house in particular, it was almost like a triple effect where you have the uh, the, the very loud uh, sort of... For this one, there wasn't really a soundtrack because there isn't really a soundtrack to the movie necessarily, but there were just noises. And then you have Leatherface 
popping out of everywhere. <laughs> and he would rev up that chainsaw every time he popped out of a location. So it, it was just like the loudness from just the speakers in there, him popping out, and then him revving up the chainsaw. So it was just so much, and yeah. it got me every time. <laughs> I did, huh? It was awesome. I mean, yeah. I, I'm not like, come on, scare me, you know, give me your best shot. I'm not like that kind of tough guy. Yeah. But uh, but it totally got me, just as like a regular guy, just kind of going through there. Yeah. Because how could you not be startled by loud sound and someone popping out from behind the wall? <laughs> you know? In the mask, yeah. Right, in the mask and with the chainsaw. Jesus Christ, that's fucking creepy. Uh, it was, yeah, it was awesome. That's why it's like my favorite. So I, I guess, therefore, it's really my kind of my favorite of all time. Right yeah. now, as it stands right now. It was very loud in all the houses. Well, Universal loves loud. They love loud sound. <laughs> <laughs> they got to do, We realized yeah. that because it, and it, it's funny that it kind of took the haunted houses for us to kind of put that together. Because then we went back <laughs> and we rode Mummy like later on and it was like, oh yeah, this is really loud too. Like, yeah. it's like louder than it needs to be. <laughs> um, they love turning the volume up on everything. That's the yeah, Universal. That. Universal's amped up. Even Rip Ride Rocket, it's like you got music blasting in your ears for the Yeah, ride. they yeah. love just loud. So that's just how they roll. Uh, Universal rolls loud and the houses... Uh, would and should not be any exception and they're not so that is an, a level that no other house i've ever experienced has uh of the sound being able to scare you just with sound absolutely loved that they did the uh the credit sequence effect where you went into sort of a, a very dark room and the flash bulb went off and you had that sound that they actually recreated the credit sequence, but that was in the middle of the house. It didn't make any sense in the middle of the house. Oh, but see, I would never have gotten that. All it right. was really cool that they did that. Yeah, and and I loved, I absolutely loved that even after you exit the tent and you're outside, they still had at least three more leather faces with yes, chainsaws. They, they, he just kept coming at you. <laughs> it wouldn't stop. And unfortunately, I it. it was it was still light out when we did this one because it was early. Yeah. So we yeah. didn't get the effect, the full effect of that. But uh, yes, we saw where he was hiding. <laughs> and yeah, it was still uh, a bunch more leather faces yeah. to go. All right. So we lo we loved the house getting to end. The, fi the fact that it had the final scares like that was great. And that was the only yeah. one that had that. Yes. By the way, yeah, no other one actually, had that. You're right. Yeah. Um, like that. But I guess that makes it even better because if everyone had that, then people would start expecting it after everyone. But this was the only one they did that on. So this was the only time where even after you get out of the main building, there's still a little more to come. <laughs> so I, it's, it's really unassuming in that sense. So I, yeah. I, I like that. It, at this point, though, I want to get onto uh, another generality kind of thing. Um, so I realized after the two houses so far that. Uh, a couple of things about Universal that set it apart from other events. The sound was one thing, actually, which we already kind of went into for the most part, but there's one other aspect to that. Uh, but first I want to mention the fact that every character in the maze, or house, whatever you want to call it, is there with a purpose. Uh, and this was true, at least for the movie houses. Uh, they did not go off and just invent a bunch of random ghouls or goons or whatever to be there just to scare you. They did it in such a way that it was true to the film and they only had the characters that should be in there. That was really great, I think. Because in the end, I'll take the 20 Leatherfaces and the 20, you know, Re Reagans over one or two and then like a bunch of just random, why are they here? You weren't in the film, why are you here? Just guy with a scary <laughs> mask. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just to scare me. Yeah. So I like the fact that everyone in there had a purpose. And in some cases, they what they did, it was very clever, is they had uh, some of the victims, the famous victims from not noteworthy scenes in the films, there, and they set them up in such a way that they would create a scare for you. So really, they're just as much a victim as you are in the house, so to speak, yeah, in the environment. But they would scare you because they'd have them set up in such a way to do that. And that was, I think, clever as hell. I, I love that. I, I did love that, yeah. Uh, so what did you think of Halloween 2? The? Uh, the movie? I've never seen it. <laughs> so I got a crash course from you while we were waiting. And this goes back to the idea of, of the queue, uh, being so lackluster where, you know, it wouldn't be a terrible thing, to, you know, because if I didn't uh, 
have you with me, or if you hadn't seen the movie like I didn't, we'd be both clueless. Oh, completely. And then it's like, unless you're going to spend the time looking it up on your phone while you're waiting, it's like you're not going to know. And so it wouldn't be a terrible thing to have like some TVs and give you some background about the movie. Uh, You know, why not, guys? But anyway, so um, the house. This one was also horrific. It was very, it it was was horrific. It had that top level again. The only thing for me is um, a little less intense than Texas Chainsaw. So that's why I would still rank that above this. But it was essentially just as good overall. You know, if I was really going to rank them point for point on technical aspects, they're about even. And then there's a little level of extra creepiness and intensity that went along with Texas Chainsaw. So that's why it's still my favorite. But this is a very close second. But again, I feel like I enjoyed it even more having you with me. Even while we were in it, uh, there were a couple moments where you were like, shouting off things you're like oh <laughs> this is the end of the first one we're going through and then it's like oh they're doing that now and that really helped it, oh, okay. helped, it helped me enjoy it even <laughs> okay. more i didn't realize that okay yeah you did that a little bit in that one yeah texas you did not i think it was so intense okay, yeah texas i was just stunned there was no chance to like catch your breath in that one yeah. and that one you didn't that one for for sure i don't think you have to know the movie it works <laughs> on its own as a standalone house for sure. Um, Exorcist and Halloween 2, I think a little bit less so. Those, I think it may help to know the movie a little bit more. If you've seen the first Halloween, I, I, I think that will still help tremendously. Yeah, but the whole hospital thing kind of would throw would have thrown me off if, if I didn't get the whole background from you. Because I would have been like, what is this about? <laughs> okay. This is a weird environment to have this happening in. Yeah. So, especially when it does start in the house. Oh, I would have yeah. been even more thrown off because I would have been like, oh, what, what? The, the thing with um, the Halloween 2 house, uh, or Halloween Hell Comes to Haddonfield, however you wanna, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um, Texas Chainsaw was like almost a little too real, <laughs> at least in terms of theme. Halloween 2 is, uh, is, sor- is sort of a fantasy. It's, it's like the ultimate... Uh, slasher maze, at least that I had ex- ever experienced. I know they did a Halloween 1 movie-based uh, house a couple years ago, I think in 2014. So, this is sort of like slasher, like a slasher 101 movie come to life. Hmm. And that was very exciting. Because <laughs> Halloween 2 is really not a great movie, but it is very kind of slasher 101. You say that, but like I know when you were describing it to me, even after we did it, you you told me a little bit more in detail about some of the. We, we were in our next wait, and then that's when you told me about some more details about the film, and about some of the kills in particular, and it made me want to see it even more. Yeah, because it well, sounded so much fun. Oh no, it is. No, I, it, it is. It, it is a fun movie, but and it that's also what sounded kind it. of phony. Like right, it just didn't sound <laughs> realistic. But they sounded like it'd be a lot of fun to watch. I guess I really got to go out here and say this. I'm a gigantic John Carpenter fan. Uh, love all of his films. The, the first original Halloween, 1978, is uh, is a really great, fantastic film. I love it. And so from that extension, I kind of love the Halloween franchise. Again, it, it was sort of like Texas Chainsaw, where I, Texas Chainsaw, I love to death the original, the 1974 original. I love Halloween and John Carpenter to death. So this was, <laughs> this sort of hit home again for me. This was a really great year for me in particular because there were a couple of houses uh, I could really connect with. So to see that Michael Myers character come to life and to come uh, after you with with the fucking giant kitchen knife and everything, yeah. and to see all those uh, kills recreated in front of you uh, was really very, very, very cool. I really got into it. And like you said, they would have the victims actually, like Jamie Lee Curtis, the, the, the uh, Laurie Strode character, they would have her come out and try and, and do jump scares. And they yeah. got me. Yeah. She shot me. She shot you. Yeah. <laughs> you got shot. That was great. Towards the end of, yeah, Halloween 2. I couldn't wait when to tell Mr. Muffy that. She she pulls out that gun. I forget where she gets the gun from, but she pulls out that gun and she actually shot me in the maze. <laughs> yeah. But she shoots Michael Myers to blind him. And that's when he's like swinging wildly with a knife or whatever the fuck it is. Yeah. And they got that in there too. So, you know, you start out where you're in the closet 
uh, at that the was end great. of the first film. You had to push, all these clothes. You had to push the clothes on either side of you, aside. and you had to push them aside. Yeah, that was right. cool. And then you have uh, Dr. Loomis, Donald Pleasance, you know, shooting Michael Meyer, and him, you know, falling back with each shot, and then eventually falling out of frame, or you know, behind the scenes in the house. Yeah, you know, out the window, uh, out the balcony, onto the lawn. Uh, just really cool that they recreated all that. But but they, they took some creative license with it. I really appreciate that they took some creative license with it and didn't create it uh, exactly how you see it in the film. And again, even like you know after that initial scene where it's the end of Halloween one, and because uh, Halloween two has a very novel concept uh, where it's just a continuation of that night of Halloween night from mm-hmm. the first film. Uh, so it just keeps going. <laughs> yeah. Where you know eventually it ends up where Laurie Strode is in a hospital and Halloween goes. Uh, uh, Michael Myers goes after uh, her. The shape, as the, as John Carpenter would call him, uh, you know, goes after her in the hospital. Uh, but that was cool because they recreated that scene where Michael Myers is like hiding out in between houses, and you have the the kids saying "trick or treat." Oh, that, that was a scare that kept coming yeah. happening. Yeah, again, so that was really clever on Universal Orlando's part. Mike Aiello, really clever <laughs> to uh, you know have the trick or treat, <laughs> right? To have the non Michael Myers characters give you scares. Yeah, that very and, and the nurses and then Jimmy Lee Curtis uh, toward the end. Yes, uh, yes, that was all great stuff. That was a great maze. That that one um, really, I felt like I went on a journey. Two more yes. than the other ones. Uh, that one felt like you stepped into sort of like the ultimate fantasy horror film, as opposed to Texas Chainsaw, which felt like, oh shit, I'm in like a real fucked up house well, with like, like crazy yeah, people. Yeah, you're in one. It's like yeah. you're in the murder house. So that's why to me they were sort of more so than they, a movie. They, they were sort of equal to me because one was like a total fantasy and one was like way more reality. With 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 the Halloween, yes, everything you described, it was it was, it was incredible. Um, I like when you got into the hospital. For a house, I thought, I don't, again, I still haven't seen the movie, but I know for a house it played pretty neat as far as a little, little different atmosphere, a little different environment to be in. They had uh, a, a, a larger use of animatronics in that one, because a number of the nurse victims were actually not real actors, but they were animatronics, <laughs> more yes. so than the other houses. I think the, uh, the spider walk was an animatronic in Exorcist. Yes, it was, yeah. And I think then the um, the revolving head was an animatronic because they're yes. not going to really twist someone's head around. Right. But other than that, and I think there was no animatronic. Oh, no. Uh, was Grandpa an animatronic in Texas Chainsaw? Ooh, you know, I really don't know. Or is that an actor who was just doing a really good we, job? We kind of... I want to say it was an animatronic. We went I, through it really quickly. I'm, I'm not sure. I want to say it was an animatronic. I'm pretty sure it was, but I can't be 100% sure. Um, the... What you, what you described it was the hot tub scene. Yes. Right? That was just awesome because he was, like, drowning someone. It, it was not only drowning, but the water was supposed to be boiling. It was supposed to be an extremely high oh, temperature. Oh, he was, like, throwing her head into boiling so water. He was, essentially right, what he was right. doing. He was drowning and burning right. her at the and same time. And that was, again, like, an animatronic that the, that the actor was, like, throwing the, the animatronic violently yeah. into, this, yeah. into, the, into the water. And it was all bubbling up and stuff. And that, that was really cool. And the one that I, I, I didn't have enough time to focus on was... The one where, where he, up. Where, right, where he's lifting her up and he injects a uh, syringe full of, I believe it's supposed to be air, just into her head, into her brain, which oh, would, her brain would kill you in real life. Yeah. So, I mean, that is like really kind of nasty. Um, yeah, that, that was one that I kind of wish I had a little more time to focus on, but that was there. And then how they got the end, which again, you helped me through a little bit more, but like when he's, I was blinded and then... Right, they have a whole scene that where was funny, um, he's just as lame as he should yeah, be. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. They actually recreated that. Uh, that uh, Michael Myers is like swinging blindly, but it's funny. Yeah, in the movie, it's like it looks really kind of lame, and in the maze, they got it really kind of lame. It was, like, it was perfect. Um, and then he gets burnt up. Yes, right. He explodes. Um, they had puffs of air. Oh, the tanks were exploding in, right, our, from in the our faces. Oxi- right, from the oxygen tanks Which and wherever cool. else they were supposed to be. Yeah, that, that, that exploded. I have to say. I was really hoping they were going to have an animatronic just c- constantly on fire and sort of convulsing. Uh, I, I was, I, I, I sort of thought they were going to do that. They, they didn't do that. Instead, they had an actor uh, with a burnt up mask. 
come at you from the ashes with a knife yeah, still it, it was like in red light so it looked like he was kind yeah. of in a fiery thing and it was it was really cool <laughs> and then you, you said yeah there was, was like at least one of the guys had the hair like kind of wrong it was like too too puffy yeah or, it was so it funny was too weird it was like frizzy <laughs> one of the guys towards the towards the be- the beginning middle of the of the maze yeah his hair was like totally <laughs> Uh, totally out and up, yeah. Like, like he'd been electrocuted or something. Right. Like that, it just looked totally wrong. Yeah. But it, it, it just made me kind of smile and laugh. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. It was great to see so many Michael Myers. Fantastic mix. I loved it. Yeah, Mike Myers, you know that guy from Austin Powers. Uh, oh, Wayne's yeah. World. Oh, yeah. he's, 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 he's he's horrifying. Comedic genius. Yeah. No, he's horrifying. He's horrifying. Oh, yeah. Oh, he totally is. Oh, have you <laughs> seen Cat in the Hat? Oh, Jesus. Oh, jeez, the Love Guru. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe say more. Oh man, that's. Yes, awesome house, uh, right up there. The, yeah, that and Texas Chainsaw were the two best. Halloween two, the house, better than the movie. Oh, okay, that's cool. Texas Chainsaw, I, I don't know if I could say that because the movie, at least for me, is so precious. Exorcist better than the movie. Uh, I house. would say Exorcist the house is better than the movie. Yeah, because the movie totally blows. The movie's boring. Yes. Yeah. So, um, just but back to uh, now another sort of more overarching thing about the whole event. And this, this, this is where the, the, the sound uh, plays into things. We talked about there being sound and how the actors or characters' movements kind of go along with sound. And um, this is sort of a byproduct of that. And this, I remember I brought it up when we were waiting, I think, for the Halloween, when we were waiting for that, uh, is how I realized that, well... If that's the case, where they're, they're relying on these soundtracks, these very loud sounds, then everything that they're doing must be choreographed. Every time uh, Michael Myers came at us with the knife, it was like a, a really like exaggerated uh, knife swooping sound. You know, even louder and more than you'd ever get in real life. But again, it, it, and, the, and the actors were in sync with the soundtrack, so yeah. I really feel like, I don't know exactly how they do it, uh, I don't know if they just do it through constant repetition and rehearsals I don't know if in the hiding spaces they have before they pop out if there's little counters that they have that are synced up with the whole thing I don't know if they go that far but everything was kind of synced up and so that's a very different aspect to these houses much different more different than anything you see anywhere else where by and large like 80% of the time at least uh, the characters are not using their voices uh, scare zones they certainly are and then Occasional spots they are, at least in the movie houses. Occasionally they'll do a grunt or a growl or something like that, or a hiss. But by and large, the dialogue and everything is from the movies and is um, piped in. They're not, they're just lip syncing to it. Or in the case of the masked characters, they're just whatever, they're there. And you, it's implied that that's the character that's saying it because they're in front of you. Uh, even the trick or treat, even the trick or treater in Halloween, right. for instance, was um, a pumped in line. Is that from the movie directly, as far as you could recognize? Or did they record um, that? I don't know. But I just know every time that person no, came out, I, it was trick or treat. But they weren't really saying it. They were like yeah. mouthing it, and it was coming from the speakers. No, I think they they added that for the maze. I don't, okay. I, I don't think they really say that in the movie because in right. the movie he's like. You know, he's off the streets. He's, like, at back doors. Oh, okay. Where there are no trick-or-treaters. Uh, very interesting, very different. That's something that I've not seen anywhere else. Right. Besides Universal now. Um, everything is, like, uh, a, a, a set show. That is kind of neat. It is, it's, it's very universal. It makes sense. That's how a movie is done. So why not, that's, why not do our houses that way? You know, why not? This was an extremely tightly controlled production. So it's completely random who gets the, the jump scare. Yeah, that's the thing. They, they can't target anyone because they're they're going to come out when the soundtrack cue tells them to come out. Right. And that's it. It doesn't matter who's in front of them. It matters right. if no one's in front of them. I guess they're going to do it because yeah. they're just going to keep going. That They're a part of the show and that's what's happening. Right, and that happened to me a bunch of, a bunch of times where I just missed an audio cue where I heard behind me that someone popped out and I heard the sound, yeah. and I could just feel the presence of someone, you know, popping up behind me. So yeah, it, 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 every house is sort of on a timer, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, it's cool. I kind of liked it. Yeah, and it totally worked. I got into it. Yeah, it was cool because it's non-discriminatory. Yes, it's not the usual effect where 
those characters kind of save themselves and they go after the girls. Of course. For the big screen. Typical target. And that sort of thing. But in this one, it's just like whenever it was time, they, they came out from their spot and that was it. And if it right. was me or you or anyone, it doesn't matter. And that was actually pretty cool. Yeah. And because it happens so often, it, it's almost like you're guaranteed to get it. Yeah. And these timers are quick. Right. Because like that, that trick or treat, I think that kept going off and off. Yeah. And the time it took us to walk it's, through that part, like I think we saw it like three times. Like, yeah, trick or no, treat. It's trick or treat, literally trick. like five seconds, the timer. It is so short. Yeah, some of them are a little bit longer. I think some of the bigger scares. Some of them are like maybe 10 with seconds. With the iconic characters, and maybe about like 10 or 15. Yeah, but, but still, yeah. that is very short. But it's quick. They're not waiting whole minutes to come out yeah. back out. No, they're not. And that speaks to, actually, I can't believe we haven't brought this up yet, now that I think about it. The fact that the houses are run as Omnimovers. Yes. Um, it's just a continuous line. Yeah, it's a one, they, big, they one don't, big Congo they line. They don't dole out like groups of 15 or 20 or 12 or whatever the fuck they want to make they don't do that they don't tie you you know bring a group together and then send you in and then wait three minutes whatever send another group it's just a continuous stream so really the only reason why there's any waits is because one there's just the sheer volume of people that go to these events <laughs> yeah. uh, every night at Halloween Horror Nights and then two the number of like there's, there's VIP and there's also like Universal Express there's like two yeah. different tiers of people that also get to cut the line so the main line then uh, stops every once in a while as these other people cut in. So that's really what creates the weights. But otherwise, it is a continuous line of people. They just kind of keep keep letting you go in single file. Right. The fast pass holes get in front of you. No, nah, the fucking fast pass holes. Well, uh, you know, it's, I mean that's really a Disney term, but we, we can use that everywhere, really, yeah, if, sure. if you like. You the know. express pass holes. Universal express ex <laughs> express heads. Express heads. <laughs> Most of the regional parks do the grouping, and then, of course, our one of our own personal favorites, Lake Compounds, is the one that does the Omnimover, and it was only because we've done that and done it so many times that we knew it worked so well, that you didn't actually need to split people up in groups. It works great if you just keep letting people go in, a, right. in an endless line. And by the way, if you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, we have a really extensive Lake Compounds uh, <laughs> Haunted Graveyard review we've already done like three years ago. I think it was our first year. Was that our first Halloween special? I think it was. I think yeah. it was, yeah. So check that out. Uh, pardon the, the cheesy bullshit around the review. <laughs> we were new to this game, and I don't know. I was excited. I couldn't help. I wrote a bunch of bits, all right? Leave me alone. Um. All right, Tomb of Ancients. Now, this was a house, one of two that we did twice. Two? Now, this house was so good. It was very well done. All right, this uh, uh, this was our first ever Universal original. Right, so first pass through it, I, I think both of us, I mean, we, we we really liked it, but it took that second pass through, at least for me, <sighs> yeah, to realize the genius of it. It's weird that um, it was the first one we did after the movie house. We had three in a row. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. I think we were high on that at that point, and once we got into something that wasn't as high artistically, maybe, uh, we kind of shut down a little bit. Uh, I know I kind of did. And for me, it's like, it was very good. I would put this in, in as another, like, equal to Exorcist. Like, great. It's not top tier. Oh, okay. It was I, on par with with uh, Chainsaw and Halloween 2. I, I agree. It was, it was not as good as those two, but I think I did like it better than Exorcist. Okay, I would say it's like on par with that. And now, if you want to bring in, uh, if we want to go back to Howl, oh, Scream, uh, <laughs> I did not like that as much. I liked Motel Hell and probably and the Bayou both better than. Oh, really? Than That's this. so interesting. Okay. So, yeah, there was some people calling this like the best thing Universal ever did. I, I don't know, but again, I, I, I when I say I don't know, I really mean I don't know because I don't yeah. have enough to pull from. I'm not even trying to say like I'm thinking about it. I just I don't even really know. Maybe it's just because the theme doesn't connect with me as well. Like the haunted temple, it kind of Where like it, reminded me of like Tomb Raider. It, yeah, it, it had a sort of it was a mix of cultures. I think it was sort of part Egyptian, part Mayan, Aztec, and yeah, you know, yeah, part yeah, everything. It was right. It, it was a mix of cultures. It's a mishmash. Yeah, it, it was it was fantasy for sure. There was yeah. nothing really real about it. It was very fantasy, and it was it was all right. It did a little bit of 
exterior theme, but again, minimal, which is... Oh, very minimal. Which is the same throughout the whole they event. They potted plants still in the plastic <laughs> pot. <laughs> yeah. And, and again, that little bit... Of, I think it was like an audio that was... Uh, supposed to be like a radio communique. Oh, we maybe. Privy to where someone was like, you know, what are we doing here? I was like, oh, damn, we're going in there. I spent a lot of money for this or something like that. Or <laughs> something like that. I don't know what they were talking about. I spent a lot of money on the to get here, maybe, or something. Or I don't, I don't know. And it was it was fun. I, that would be the word I would describe this one, I think, is fun. Um, it was close quarters pretty much the entire time. It was narrow. This one reminded me of uh, Haunted Graveyard Lake Compounds, maybe more than any of them did. That it, it um, there's a there's a section that is sort of like the Mayan temple in the haunted graveyard, so it it sort of reminded me of that very much, just done a little bit better. Instead of being more clearly plywood, it was like done up much better. You know, there was some great stuff in there. There was a human sacrifice, sure. Oh yeah, they went for it. Actually, the the thing that I thought that was the coolest, and maybe it was just because it's something I never saw before, was uh, stilt walkers. So inside, yeah, yeah. stilt walkers indoors, scaring you. And I, I that think was different. I just had never seen that before. That may have been the creepiest thing in that house for me. Yeah, because that guy, he started out at the end of a room and was walking towards you at a very fast pace. Yeah. And that was kind of unsettling. They had like their own like passageway that wasn't part of where you walked. That they yes. were kind of in and you were allowed to see them. And it looked like almost like they were like a caged animal. But yet, then they would approach you, and then they would bend over and kind of right. like no, come into your space yeah, in the main pathway. It was this totally open window where they could totally yeah. pop through. Yeah. So it started. It would like look. The illusion would be like it looks like this is something I'm just going to watch from a distance, but it's not going to scare me. And then they come kind of charging at you and scare you. Yeah. And the fact that they were high, that they're larger than you, and then they were very good at like bending down to kind of get in your space. Oh yeah. And that was very great. Yes, that, yeah, that, that, that worked good. really well. So I would say that's my favorite part uh, of that. And then you know there was some other stuff. Yeah, that. But, no, there was know. one room in particular where I remember uh, I was just surrounded by characters. Ah, I just really? everywhere I looked, there was someone you know on any side of me, and and that was like pretty cool. I mean, again, it wasn't like the scariest thing, but it was just like cool that like. Wow, they're employing all these people. To, oh yeah, like, well, that's... surround me at this particular moment in this maze. Oh yeah, it was I impressive. Mean, at the, that was the thing. I mean, there was no lack of of characters. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's most dense amount of of, of characters I think anywhere they have ever seen. So yeah, that was good. That, that's definitely another way that Universal's plussed up over anyone else's event. Um, they just have a sheer. They just have the sheer numbers. <laughs> And it works, because even if they're not always jumping and scaring you at that exact moment, just the fact that they're there with you, and there's just it's just always there. It's, you're always with this character. And, uh, you know, again, in the end, you're paying a lot of money to be there and everything. That's what you want. You know, you don't want to just have deserted hallways, because otherwise, what are you there for? And, and in Tomb of the Ancients, uh, if you look up at uh, the ceiling, they actually covered the ceiling for the entire thing or almost the entire thing of Tomb of the Ancients so yeah, for a lot of it I think that one had a, like you were saying it had a very claustrophobic kind of feel yeah they did it wasn't absolute though it just now if you want to go back to just all the houses as a whole um, I would have thought again this is universal this is the most uh, renowned Halloween event ever uh, I would have thought that they would have had 100% ceiling coverage essentially and yeah. or, or lighting that was so good like Hollow Scream had and they didn't there was a lot of spaces where you could look up and you could see the soundstage ceiling. I know maybe you're not supposed to look at the ceiling, but I, I don't know. <laughs> I do, and I I was a little disappointed. There were certain rooms where the ceiling was covered, but uh, I'd still say a solid like 75% was not. Maybe if, if maybe a quarter overall of ceilings were covered, maybe I'm being a little harsh. Maybe two third, maybe a third were covered, and then two thirds weren't. But it, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be on that just to have another critique in there. Because what we do here, we don't just suck dicks. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Halloween Horror Nights, it wasn't a bust by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and I think that's coming out clear with our review and how much uh, excitement and energy we have in this yeah. room even right now talking about it. But at the same time, you know, was it perfect? No. And we've been telling you about those things too. So there you go. All right, so next house, what did we do? We then did... we did Krampus? Okay. 
So we did Krampus. Uh, I did see the movie. You did not? I did not. Okay. The movie is like, it's all right. It's fun. It's an okay, <laughs> it's an okay movie. No, it's a good time. If you're into, like, Christmas horror films, it's a fun time. I, I, you know, I enjoyed it. Uh, but anyway, uh, the house was also kind of all right. Um, they did make it colder in there. To, it was noticeably it, colder. This one had that effect. Yes, it did. Mo most of the scares came from the uh, the elves that were um, four to five feet high. And they had these weird masks on them and robes and stuff. Well, it's funny. If yeah, this is another. One. If you weren't with me, I would never have known those were elves. This one was noticeably shorter than the other ones. I think. Was it now? Uh, uh, I, think, I don't know. I thought this one was not okay. Not terribly shorter, but like I think it was shorter than the other ones. Uh, I mean, but it was still fine. Krampus himself had a minimal presence. Yeah, that was whatever. Interesting because the other uh, more iconic characters in the other. Movie mazes had a oh, tremendous they were, presence. They were around every corner, yeah. But now, did you say something that Krampus doesn't have a big presence in the film? Is that why um, they did it? Does he not show up until like the last few minutes of the movie? He no, no. It's it's not like that. He does have a presence, um, but yeah, but he's not in the movie. He, he, he's not doling out every kill like Michael Myers or Leatherface from Texas Chainsaw. But still, it, he he felt underutilized in the maze. So that he should have been in there. More I, I know this sounds like such a you know, dumbass critique, like someone who's been to Horror Nights for like a hundred years, but I, I can't help but say that. Well, no, but it, it, was he in the movie more than the maze? That's the he question. was. So then he should have been in there more. Than yeah. Him. Now, was do you think it was a logistical thing? Was it just too hard? <sighs> yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe. Is he like well, the, big, the is he is, big monster or is that just horns he wears on his yeah, head? No, like in the movie, he is like at least 10 feet tall. Oh, uh, see? So He's maybe a giant creature. They just couldn't figure out how to do it, or they just yeah. they ran out of budget or something, and they just they couldn't. Because what they did was they had a kind of a force perspective where he's on the roof. Yeah. That's the first time you see him. So I think it's supposed to be like, you're supposed to think he's bigger than he is because... Although that didn't work for... Well, universal force perspective. We can go... <laughs> we'll, talk about, we'll talk about that some other episode. But, yeah. Because um, <laughs> it looked at every bit like it was the six-foot figure you know, tops that it was, the five or six-foot figure. It didn't look like it was huge, but... They, they did that, and then he doesn't really show up until the end after that, right? Doesn't he have, like, a scare toward the end? Yeah, when it's like you're in his lair. Yeah. Uh, you know, they, they included the gingerbread scene, which was which was cool, which is fine. You know, you know, it smelled like gingerbread in there. This, yeah, this was one of the only instances of uh, smell -a vision yeah, or smell -a -vision. Whatever, whatever you want to call it, that they did, which was something that we were waiting for based on that, that, that great special they did back for, about the 2002 Highland Horror Nights. And... Um, Overall, though, I thought that that was underutilized because uh, that was the only time I think I really... No, I think, yeah, I think that was the only... I think there was, uh, there was a general Christmas smell and then there, like a cinnamony Christmas smell and then there was a gingerbread smell. Yeah, Like right. that maze used smell and temperature. But then none of the other mazes did, I don't believe. Yeah, supposedly there was some sort of musty smell in Texas Chainsaw, but I don't know. I oh. I, I was so overwhelmed by that maze. Well, that one was like a sensory overload, that, so yeah, yeah. Maybe we just didn't notice. But, you know? but anyway. Also, that's one of those things that could come from, like, we're, like, jaded, like, from being from too many regional parks. You know, <laughs> versus people that, people that are so used to going to Universal for Halloween. And so maybe we're just, like, because so many... Uh, areas in, in regular regional parks just have musty smells. <laughs> you know? Because it's just yeah. how they are. They just, yeah. there's a lot of, just a lot of them yeah. are, they're getting older. A lot of, they're all, most of them are all built in the 70s and uh, a couple even, even earlier than that. And so like, yeah, there's a lot of old areas in the queues and weird corners sometimes that just have weird musty smells. You know, when it gets hot in the summertime, there's a lot of heat because the smell comes out. Yeah. And it's not a horrible smell, but it's just it's a little musty or like a little rotty wood smell or something and you'll get. So it's like, I guess maybe we just weren't thinking about it because it was like, you, sometimes you go into an, uh, a structure, like a tent like that in an amusement park and it just has that smell. <laughs> yeah. And maybe we just weren't thinking about it. So whatever. Maybe but not. Anyway, uh, this one did have a couple of noticeable smells and the temperature, which I did like. I mean, oh, you know, overall, I mean, I liked it though. I, I'll say this. I thought all the houses were good. Not one of them was bad. I can't say any one of the houses that we went through was bad. Oh, yeah. I totally agree. None of them were bad. They were all very, very good. Yeah. They are all right up there with the best houses you've ever seen. Oh, And, that, and that's yeah. why, in the end, we're giving this a great review. And, that's, and, and they're saying that, you know, we see and we totally understand why Halloween Horror Nights is considered the premier event. Uh, we're not going to come out in any way, shape, or form and say that we don't understand it or didn't get it. 
you know, because we, we did get it. Um, I, mean, I mean, I'll say Krampus was, you know, a more forgettable house, but I mean, but I still had a good time going through there, I and, think, I, and I still liked see, it. to me it wasn't forgettable just because it was so different, because it had the Christmas imagery, and it had a nice inside-outside Oh, it section did, yes. Yeah. That was very, very, done very well, and uh, it had the icicles hanging off the, the house, the roof and everything, and so I thought that was really cool. So, no, I, I actually couldn't forget it because of that, because it was something that I had never seen. See, to me, actually, Tomb of Ancients is probably the most forgettable. Ah. Because I could easily, in another year from now, like, I could easily just sort of, like, start confusing that with things I've seen at Haunted Graveyard, <laughs> like compounds, <laughs> okay. and other things, and then start just kind of mishmashing it and forgetting it. Uh, Krampus will stick out in my mind because it was interesting, at least. Uh, I will say, though, I think that was probably the least amount of scares I got. Yeah. Yeah, there was very, like, no startle moments, really. So that was interesting. They, they followed along, though. They only had the characters that should be there, like the elves and Krampus. Right. They didn't have any other random ghouls, which was good. And, uh, all right. We said about the rest of the stuff that was good about it. Um, all right. Okay, so next thing we did, what was it? Was it Ghost Town? I think it was Ghost Town. Ooh, Ghost Town. All something, right. something, Lightning Gulch. Yeah, the there's curse, some sort of subtitle the on that. Curse of Curly's Gold? <laughs> Is that what it was? <laughs> While we were waiting, you did say that, what about, um, this is when we started getting, now this was the longest wait we had up to this point, was for this one. Oh, We got stuck right. in line for quite a, uh, quite a while. And we started talking about, uh, you know, other houses that, you know, what other movies could they do in the future, you know, and then we were talking about, it got kind of silly, we were starting to get delirious, it was getting late. And, uh, <laughs> you actually came up with, how about City Slickers 2? <laughs> curse of Curly's Gold. Yeah, the yeah. Curse of Curly's Gold, or whatever it's called. Uh, it's Ghost Town, the Curse of Lightning Gulch. Yeah. They actually have curse in there? Yeah, it is the curse. Oh, Jesus. I don't That's kind of bad. Yeah, that is cheesy. That's a very regional park name. Yeah. Which is kind of funny. Yeah, it is funny. That there's a lot of elements about this event that are not above what the regionals are doing. Yeah. Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I guess okay. a lot of it's because the regionals have caught on. But So for this one, do you want to give your story? Oh, my story. While we were waiting, so then as part of this long wait, we were going off uh, back and forth about movies. Uh, I remember I was I brought up Gremlins. Uh, oh yes, we figured out a way to make it work. By the way, yeah. If you're listening, Universal, we had so much time. We have <laughs> figured out a way we can make Gremlins work. Which it's is like good. Gremlins yeah. two in particular. We can make work. Gremlins two, yeah. By just having the people, the, by just yeah, by having, having the, the victims with the with the gremlins on their bodies. Exactly, having them attached to their arm or their back or whatever, and then they can come out and shock people. And uh, so you don't even need to have, like, a lot of gremlin animatronics. Yeah, like, just you the, can just make it work with the victims. Because most of them would just be, like, rubber dolls on, on people, on the yeah. costumes. And then you have a few, but if it's gremlins too, yeah, you could do, like, the big spider, the giant spider one. Right, the giant spider be, one, the giant really bat creepy. one. So you could have a whole, you, you the, go into yeah. a whole room where it's just the spider webs, and then it's, like, the giant spider one, and then, yeah, and then you the bat, the freaky bat one, the gargoyle one. Right, um, all the different ones, and 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 the science lab, uh, y you could do the whole bit. Yeah, actually, that would actually work really well. <laughs> yeah, as That'd we be great. Thought, as we went through it on that line, yeah, <laughs> you really the would. lightning one you can do just with projection or something with lightning effects. Oh yeah, strobe effects. You know, you could easily do that. Something okay, just a quick stop here. It's something that they did have in uh, a few of the houses, they did utilize. So there was a few instances where there was a little a little extra like bit of universal magic that you wouldn't see at a, another regional park. Uh, where they had a projection or some kind of a, a plussed up uh, effect. Uh, so there was a bunch of those throughout. You know. Although, again, not as many as I thought there would be. But no. there, was, there was a few. And then when they used it, it worked. So I will say that. Uh, but then uh, we, we still had a long wait to go on, on, the, on that ghost town. And uh, it was good. While we were waiting, we actually saw. And they, they, we didn't get to meet anybody because uh, they were taking the, uh, taking the VIP lane. Straight oh, no, to the no, front. It was, it was more than the VIP straight lane. Straight to the front of the line. What well, we realized later. But uh, a group of WWE wrestlers. Well, actually, that's not entirely true. It was a mix of TNA and WWE wrestlers uh, together. Uh, but we saw Dolph Ziggler. Uh, Cody Rhodes was there who recently uh, debuted with TNA. And his wife, Brandy. Uh, also, Zack Ryder who's uh, in WWE right now, uh, and his girlfriend, Emma, who's a wrestler who's currently um, out with an injury, hasn't returned yet. 
Uh, we saw all of them uh, walk right past the, the, the crowd, right past the queue, and they were going straight to the head of the line to get into the ghost town. And uh, they were apparently led by Michael Ayalo, the uh, head of Universal's Halloween Horror Nights, Florida at least, creative. I think the way it works is a separate crew for California, Hollywood. Not expecting that whatsoever. So, yeah, we didn't get a chance to meet anybody, and then we were still, we had a bit of a wait, so well, there wasn't even a chance for us to, to, to catch him on the way out or anything. It definitely wasn't going to happen. So, whatever. We were on a mission, uh, for sure. So, whatever. It didn't happen. But, um, we saw him. That was, that was pretty neat. And, uh, and Kennedy was there, too, from former MTV VJ, who's now on Fox Business, I believe. Apparently, Michael Aiello is a wrestling fan and uh so there's actually apparently he puts wrestling references in throughout the event every year which i didn't know uh specifically the bill and ted show i think always has at least one wrestling reference or a couple it's funny I, we saw the show and then we got out and i said someone who works here or writes for that show must be a wrestling fan yeah and little did. did i know that like it was like the head guy who's actually <laughs> a, a wrestling fan and right. um and he actually, I guess, has cultivated some relationships with the wrestlers, at least those few guys. And those are not top-tier guys. If you don't recognize those names, there's a reason. Because they're not necessarily top-tier guys. They're kind of like mid-tier guys. But still, I guess he's gotten to know those guys. And, and those guys uh, happen to like amusement parks, I think, uh, is what it is. I think they kind of hit parks occasionally when they travel around the country uh, going to the different wrestling shows. So that was cool. That was cool we got to see that. I, I enjoyed that. That was a fun distraction while we were... While we were there waiting, we did sort of run into Dolph Ziggler the night before. We had an inkling that the that, that at least he was there. At least some or, or maybe some contingent from WWE was there. Yeah, based on the night before in City yeah. Walk, we were <laughs> we were two of the only four people on a boat on one of the water taxis coming out of one of the hotels. We we were there. To, we ate at one of the Universal hotels that night, and then we were taking the water taxi back. And we didn't realize until after we got off that the the two people that were on the boat with us were. Or Dolph Ziggler and Kennedy. And Dolph Ziggler opened up the exit gate for us and held it. Yes, he was a gentleman. Uh, and he, that was a very nice Yes, he was like, that. after you guys. And, like, we both looked and we couldn't believe it. I mean, I'm not, you know, the biggest wrestling person. I kind of just know it, you know, sort of through you. Yeah, mainly. I'm the wrestling fan between the two of us. And, and yeah. Yeah, and I kind of turned to you and I said, that kind of looks like Dolph Ziggler. Yeah. And then you said, I think that is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, I was like, yeah, I think that is Dolph Ziggler. Yeah, that was, that was weird. That was weird. Anyway. All right, so back to <laughs> Ghost, Ghost Town. Town. <laughs> back to the Ghost Town. So this is like, uh, you know, Tech Shitter style house. This is a <laughs> Western. <laughs> it's a real Western, you know. Um, they say Westerns are dead, but I don't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. They always make a comeback. Yeah. I got to tell you, I absolutely love this house. This was yeah. just so much fun. I love this house. Yes, this is, uh, to me, this was the best of the originals. Oh, yeah. This, this, this was better than By far. Tomb of Nations. Yes. Great stuff. It was just uh, constant gun battles. Is <laughs> what it really was. Yeah. Essentially, it was just like they put you in the middle of like a never-ending like gunfight, which is kind of weird. It almost didn't have the most to do with what Halloween Horror Nights is, or it, no. It almost didn't it, have business being there. Actually, I almost hate to say no, that, but it, it, it wasn't spooky or anything. Yeah. It was just. Like an old western It's town. like, I guess the, the the cowboys were supposed to be ghost cowboys? They were supposed to be, yeah. Like, is that what it said? I'm gonna open yeah, this up Yeah, they second. were all supposed to be dead. Yeah, now their souls wait. So it's almost like we're going through this this old western town that's abandoned. It's, it's a ghost town, right? It, yeah. It's a ghost town in 2016. And then we're gonna see the souls of everyone who was there and who died there in whatever year. 18, whatever. So, right. they're all supposed to be ghosts, but it almost doesn't matter. It doesn't really come off that way. It almost just comes off more like we're transported back in time, and we're just in the middle of this gunfight. Yeah, And definitely. it's just kind of fucking cool. But, <laughs> right! And that's, like, really great by itself. Because it doesn't least, matter. I didn't I didn't right. look for anything to be ghosts. I didn't because, care. Right, because I, I, I know between you and I, we both love the Wild West theme. Yeah. It's one of our favorite themes. So, it was really cool to see a house that, that had that. And... The, the, the set design was really incredible. This one in particular had some really open areas and some really claustrophobic areas. Uh, it was just yeah. very, well, very well done. parts where you supposed to be outside, and there's parts where you went back inside, and then you kept going back and forth Yeah, a lot. And um, 
The saloon was great. Ah, uh, the guy in the piano. The piano gag. Got you twice. Didn't he you? got me. He was literally even the like, second time when you knew it was coming. It yeah, still got you. He got. He was fucking like three centimeters away from my face. He really got me <laughs> both times. Because he would come out with his arm extended, like yeah. lunge at you, and that was really great. Yeah. Um, the outside part, that part where they brought the cannon in when you're outside. Oh, that whole outside scene is really it's awesome. It's so loud. See, this is like the most engrossed in any houses I've ever been, was at these houses at Universal. <laughs> yeah. And I think the sound had a lot to do with it, the, the elevated sound. Um, because I found myself like interacting with them, like, like when the cannon went off, like I ducked. Like mm. I physically ducked. Because you just got into it. I couldn't help it. I was, I was yeah. into it. I was in the moment. Right, and it was just right. stuff like that. Like you duck and you played along. And then this one is where I got shot. <laughs> I got shot with like a sawed off <laughs> shotgun yeah. in this house. And um, in some bedroom, right? Yeah, just some like crazy bitch got me. <laughs> and like I went for it though. Like I found my, I couldn't I couldn't help it. I was like a kid again, like playing cops and robbers in the backyard. Yeah. And it was yeah. like you know, the gun was pointed at me and the sound hit and then and you know, she makes a little recoil motion, you know, the actor does. And like I just I went with it. I like oh I like held my chest and I like I went back and like <laughs> stumbled for a couple steps like just for the hell of it. Not with, right. not even even thinking about it. You know like there's no camera on me or anything. I'm not doing it to ham it up or anything. It's just like I did it because it was in the moment and it just felt right to do it. And it was just so much fun. And that's what was so great about this stuff. You know stuff like that where you just played along with them and it was great. And I know that they secretly love it. They can't. Oh really, yeah. They're not gonna. They, they really are professionals, and they're not gonna break character. They're not gonna crack a smile or anything. But like, I know that they appreciate that too, and that makes me feel good because, you know, it's all it's it's, it's all I can do. It's not like a restaurant where I'm gonna tip them at the end of the night. <laughs> um, it, you know, you, yeah. you get one waiter and you tip that waiter. It's like there's like hundreds of characters you encounter throughout the night, and it's all you can. The best I can do to give back is to let them know like how into it I'm getting or how good a job they're doing. Like. Look at this, I'm playing along with you now. It's like this is really awesome. And so that makes me feel good too. Yeah, it was just it was just it was so hard to just not get in that mind frame. <laughs> it was it was it was incredible. You were surrounded by terror. Yeah, yeah! That was, that was her running through me. Yeah, <laughs> and I know the big catchphrase of that house is um you know, that's my gold. <laughs> you know, he does a little <laughs> at the end there. Yeah. Um that one, you're guaranteed to have a good time. <laughs> that is a fun time, yes. It is incredible. That one was just pure fun. I, that that one, because we did that one twice, <laughs> and it was just so much fun both times. You know, after we first did it, that was like competing for my favorite too, because that, that's how much fun it was. Yeah. And then you know, now that I'm home and the dust has settled, it's like realistically I can't say it's my favorite. <laughs> but it it. it, it it was so much fun. It's like if we're gonna award different awards for each one, it's like most fun is like that one. And that one had a really cool effect where it was uh, it was like drizzling. You go into the the outside scene, yes, and they, they have some rain drizzle on you and some wind. They and, actually and lightning did. because it's called Lightning Gulch, and like yeah. they actually have lightning in there. Yeah, it's it's basically just storming the entire time throughout the entire house, and it's like yeah, they actually did do some rain, and that was it's, very impressive. It's light enough that it doesn't like get you wet really but it's like it's enough that you can feel it it's like the perfect amount they totally figured that out and that's the universal touch see that's the next level kind of kind of stuff that uh i was expecting or, yeah. or, or, or that I, I had hoped would be there oh absolutely um i still kind of say in the in the end i wish I, there could have been a little bit more of it oh definitely i feel like they almost yeah. held back a little too much i think they I, did i'm not sure where they do that but again i i know every year is totally different so you know, it's, it's a whole set of new houses every year, mm. give or take Walking Dead. So, uh, that being said, like, <laughs> maybe they they went so far in previous years, and and now it's like they're being a little more careful to dole it out, because if you do too many things like that, it becomes hard to top yourself. Mm. So maybe they've already kind of peaked, and and maybe now they're a little more interjected only when they feel it really needs to be there. I I don't know, but my one experience I could have used a little bit more, but I, I still loved it every time I got it. Oh, yeah, for sure. I love the next level stuff. It's great. Uh, all right, so next one we did, what, what, this was the last house, at least of the first night we did, uh, yeah. Lunatic's Playground, or Lunatic we... Playground, whatever it's called. Lunatics. The Chance House. The Icon's House. The Icon. Um, it's uh, 3D. Yes, oh, Jesus Christ. Lunatic's okay. Playground 3D. So when we... You won't stand a chance. So at this point, I just want to set the stage a little bit. 
this is like whatever one o'clock in the morning it was the last one we did it was yeah and we're getting towards the end of a week-long you know trip in orlando with doing parks from you know morning till late at night yeah so at least me i'm totally blown out my brain has kind of turned to mush (laughs) <laughs> and like you want, to, you want me to put on these 3D glasses and go through this house at this point? I was a little, oh, I was blown out too. That one f- for for us should have just been called delirium. <laughs> yeah, the house because yes, we were both delirious, and the glasses and the wacky effects that they tried to have a few worked, a lot of them didn't. Um, but it, it made it even more insane. It was one of those things when we were done. It was kind of like I don't know if we should have saved that one for last. Yes, that's that might exactly have been a, that feeling. might have been a mistake because it was really kind of crazy. Because I couldn't really process anything at that point. Like it, anyone that jumped out at me, like no one could get me at that point because I was just that was I was so gone at that point. Like being on a trip, really. Yeah, no, you you were totally on a NASA trip. Uh, you were gone. Yeah, that was weird. LSD um, heaven. Yeah. I think the big problem was neither one of us were taken with the icon chance we kind of called the the trip and and the adventure and uh we're kind of calling the series no chance in hell uh however it really was just a coincidence it had nothing to do it was not based on the character chance actually (laughs) and i think the intro uh that you should have heard already um explains that what, what it really was about for us um the the chance as a character uh if you want to just divulge into that for a second at this point we might as well I mean, I thought it had potential. I thought it was different. I, I I think they had done one other female before. This is not the first female icon. Is it the second? Oh, definitely not. There was like yeah. a Lady Luck, was it? That they had the and they had the storyteller, which was like an old. Oh, woman. she was a lady too. Okay, so it was yeah. a couple of ladies. Um, but I thought you know I thought that that was interesting. Um, and they could have done something with it, and you know I think just by making her kind of sexy and 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 and, and working that that sort of horror sex connection could have been could have been good, but. I think they really just failed on this one. <laughs> I think it was a lot of missed opportunity, or just uh, I, maybe the the main actress that plays the character. Maybe I don't know whose fault it really is, actually. But I don't know how these things come together. How the icon itself works, I have no I, I have no idea. I'm not gonna pretend to know. But it just came off a week. Yeah. No, we, we saw right. her like two or three different times. We walked by the main section where the main drag when you first get into the park, uh, where they had her on stage. And every time it was like a disappointment. <laughs> she had nothing. She would she would like stand there in like silence for like thirty seconds at a, at a pop sometimes, and then she'd finally say something and it would be like nothing. She wasn't menacing. She wasn't scary. She wasn't sexy. She wasn't funny. She wasn't anything. She was just bland. And I was to me. I know I was only there for again two nights out of the thirty that they're gonna have this year, but still, to me it was a failure. That's all I can say about that. And I I agree. I wasn't into the character whatsoever. This character was not fleshed out. Um, They they really just didn't know what this character was supposed to be, is what it seemed like to me. Yeah. Um, It's like they didn't know, and then she didn't know what to do. Right. Maybe I almost kind of felt bad for her, because it felt like they gave her nothing, and she just was out there. I did feel bad for the person playing her. She was out there exposed in a silly outfit, and like, what do I do? I don't know. Right. Because essentially, it seemed like a Harley Quinn ripoff, but... Yeah, you had brought that up. Yeah. But, I mean, what beyond that is she supposed to be? And it seemed like the people didn't think beyond that. Yeah, it was weak. But anyway. But anyway, her maze was like, I mean, whatever. It was, you know, it was blacklight. Her ma- it was I, the clown house. I liked it. Was it was fine. I liked it. Right. I can't, I can't say it was bad. It was definitely not. I think I liked it better there than you There was a lot did, of maybe. stuff in there. I, well, I think I was less blown out than you, I think, too. I think I so. I was blown out, but you were, no, like, really blown because, out. Because, listen, there was that spinning tunnel very early oh, on. Oh, yes. And that just destroyed my brain. That was great, though. It was. That I was the l- craziest tunnel I've ever been that in. That may have been. That may have been the ultimate. Because with the 3D glasses, the actual words that were on the tunnel it actually like, appeared to me in 3D. It was like words. Everything else in the house, I did not see in 3D. But that tunnel got to me, it and was it was like, like oh, God, I don't know what the hell is going on. It was anymore. like words uh, uh, like swirling around you. It was like a tunnel of words, and yeah. then it was like I guess it was insane things that she was saying or something. And then, well, no, I, I think I, I it's supposed to be you're in her head. The yeah, whole thing is like her that. fantasy. Is yeah. what it is. It, it's in other words, she's in an asylum and she committed a crime and she's in an asylum. And then um, the whole thing is like her fantasy of what of her escaping and killing all the guards and stuff. So 
That's what it is. But yeah, that tunnel was insane. I really couldn't walk straight through it. Like for no, real. No, I was for, totally sideways. For real. That was awesome though. I loved it. Yeah. And then because it was spinning faster than I think any tunnel. There was a I'd lot of great kicks. I actually kind of like that house. I like the um, heart. There was like a heart that was like three yes. dimensional. Like that worked for me. Where like, yeah. you know, I thought the glasses were a little cheesy for Universal, but. <laughs> But yeah, it, but they do kind of work. Um, it makes well, I understand it, it restricts your peripheral vision. That's why when I saw them, I was like, "Oh God, what are they doing? Like, they're gonna oh. make me like not see any more than I can right now." Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't really care about that. I, I, it's it's all right. It's 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 neat. It, it becomes a neat souvenir. Oh too, yeah, when you, I when, got when you leave, so that's cool too. But I still um, got them. Uh, chance worked better than there than anywhere else. I'll say that. She didn't work on the audio. Yes. She didn't work on the posters. She didn't really work uh, uh, the actual actress. Uh, all that felt kind of flat to me. But yet, um, in the house was where she kind of came alive a little bit more to me. All right. Uh, it was fun. It was fun. It was fun, and it was an interesting way to end the night, that first night. Yeah, yeah, it was. If not crazy way to end the night. Uh, so let's jump to uh, right. the one other house that you did, but I did not. All right. So then... Uh, we're talking about American Horror Story. All right. This was the second night where they were open till 2 a.m. Oh, right. And My kind of park. And we got on the line. Oh, here, here. Pro tip. Pro tip for you here. Uh, this was actually a tip uh, that I got from Chris. Yes, Surf Dance Chris. Uh, that, um, you know, he told me that American Horror Story in particular, will they will inflate the wait times. Uh, you know, in, in his words, it was to, to uh, deter people from going on uh, or getting online late at night. Uh, I guess to kind of end it as early as possible. So uh, it said it was so high. I think at one point I saw 115 minutes. Ooh. Was maybe the highest I saw at any one time we walked by. It had only gone down to 75 minutes. Okay, 75 when, minutes. When it was like 145. It was like 145 in the morning or something. Yeah, and it was like 75 minutes. And all right, so we walked in there. We said, all right, let's check it out. And I saw that there was still a decent line in there, and I said. All right, forget it. I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm <laughs> you're, done. You're done. You tapped out. Yeah. I said, I right, I'm going to sit down. I knew what Kristen said, and I, I was unhung with it. Uh, I actually got in touch with him while I was online, and I verified wait times. And uh, and I knew it wasn't going to be that long. So right. I stuck it out. But even still. So the, the bottom line was it was only about 30 minutes. When okay. It, when the sign said 75, that's a big differential. Oh, yeah. And yeah. I, ironically, I didn't end up sitting down. I took like 50 million laps around the gift shop trying to find a souvenir for someone. But anyway. <laughs> well, that's... <laughs> Brian, you went through the house. So I did it. Tell um, me about American Horror Story. How was it? So it was It was also, I'd say, great. Like, great level. So I guess nothing really was below that overall. Everything was like top two tiers, you know. And um, I also have never seen any episode of the show. So I didn't really know exactly what I was seeing. Um, it was, uh, in this case, and this is actually ironic because you would not have been able to help me on this one, even if you were there with me. It, uh, but the people that were um, uh, right behind me uh, were fans of the show. So I was just kind of overhearing them uh, at times throw a little something out like, oh, look, it's, you know, whatever, this character. and Oh, if you did that. So I would just kind of know when they really nailed something because they would, like, be very happy about it. It was very good. It was long. I think it was the longest one. Yeah, It was the that, longest that's house read. of all of them. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, it's good. So if it's the longest wait, at least it's the longest house, too. So you get a little more bang for your buck there. The one that stood out to me the most was the, uh, like, the Circus Sideshow. Would you say it was Freak Show? I believe so, yeah. Yeah, because that was one of those where I didn't need to see a show to understand what I was looking at. And that was done very, very well. Uh, I think that was the best, um, like, circus horror thing that I'd ever done. It great outside, inside. They did it with, uh, they did it, you know, like it should be done up. Like, where it was actually, like, you're outside and there's, like, the wagons. And they had really clever hiding spots, uh, like, under the wagons and stuff. They'd pop up. Ooh. And, um, and then they had, like, where you're at the, you're supposed to be the side of the tent, the, the freak show tent. And then they come out of the, between the panels and they, they, they come at you. And uh, that, was some, that was good stuff. That was really fun. I even like the entrance to that section because that was in the middle of it, I guess. Uh, I mean, it might have been the third, actually the last section. It might have been the third and final section. And you enter through like a big freaky devil clown mouth. <laughs> is what you go in through. 
And uh, that was really cool. Like, it's full, real size built, real so you really walk through it. And um, then I guess, yeah, hotel. Is that, is that a period piece, the hotel? Because I thought it was like 1940s or something is what it no seemed idea. like to me. No But maybe no it idea. wasn't. I don't know. But yeah, I definitely picked up on the hotel. That was a very cool, intense scene where you go through a room where um, uh, I guess crazy zombie demon something is like coming out from a mattress. Mm. So it's like the mattress splits and he pops out and then it's like, Rawr! you know, going crazy. <laughs> and that was cool. And then, like, there was, like, it was, like, the leather-clad guy, I think, is what I could deduce. That there's some guy that dresses in all black leather, like, head to toe. And I guess that's a killer or something that was in one of the seasons. I believe that's the first season. Okay. I think I do know that much. And, um, that was neat. They used the gag with that where they had oh, a, a pretty larger open room where they had, like, about... I don't know, seven or eight, like, mannequins all dressed in the leather, and then one character dressed in the costume. And then, like, it was, like, low light, and then I think it would strobe occasionally two in the room, and then it was, like, you didn't know, you know, it really messed with your senses, and you didn't know where the character was, and then, you know, because he would stand in, like, a weird contorted pose, just like the mannequins, and then and then all of a sudden lunge at you. And so you really, it would get you good, because you didn't know what was a mannequin, what wasn't. And that was really cool. That's what they used. There's also some, like, pig-headed creature that came out of a bathtub, I think. <laughs> Which I'm not sure what the hell that was about. If that is one of those other seasons as well. Another part of one of those. I don't know. Maybe it's the same leather guy in a pig mask. I, 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 I have no <laughs> idea. Maybe, it's a, maybe it was part of the freak show. I, I can't even remember the order. Because it was 2.15 in the morning. And it yeah. was the end of a long adventure. that <laughs> With a lack of sleep, so... I'm a little fuzzy on some of it, but I, I do know I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I had to do it just to see if they had any other final tricks up their sleeve, knowing that that was, like, the hot new house for this year. And if they were going to put maybe some other new technology, they might have put it in that one. And then, kind of disappointingly, that it wasn't. It was yeah. just the same gags again, but uh, but it was done very well, just like all of them were. Right, so, and so now those are all the houses, so we did so, all of them yeah. except Walking Dead. All we didn't do is Walking Dead. So, yeah, that is a very interesting thing to point out that really they just do the very traditional haunted house, but they just do it so damn well. Yeah, they keep it simple and traditional. The best I can come up with is, honestly, I think it's it has to do with the fact that even though we're getting to this late, Universal Halloween Horror Nights is, I think, in a lot of ways, the originator of what's going on out there. And we kind of saw all the imitators first, and now we're seeing them. So it's a little weird to do it that way, because there's a bit of disappointment in the fact that Universal is just doing a lot of things that you see. Yeah. They're doing it better, but still, it's just it's not really anything more, for the most part. Right. You know, with a few extra 4D kind of effects that no one else is doing. Aside from that, they're not really doing anything different. It's just they're doing maybe a little more of it, and they're doing it on a higher budget and on a higher stage. Um, I wish it was a little more, but... Or I guess this, I'm, I'm fine with what I had this time. But it's like, I really now feel like I do want to see more, like, in the future. <laughs> like, I wish... I just wish they would do a little more, some more plussed-up effects more often in the houses. A little more... Uh, fully enclosed houses you know do the ceiling all the way certainly the queue stuff we talked about and the entrance stuff we talked about the characters are, I think are fine I don't think there's anything lacking there they all did a great job some of the best characters I've ever seen the fact that they have to kind of rehearse and choreograph themselves I think that's even a higher level of art that they have to do um, you could say maybe it's less I guess you could argue that either way the characters and other um events like King's Dominion, maybe because they're more left on their own, to their own devices, maybe they have, they're more creative and these guys are less creative. I don't know, you could argue either way. I think they're all great though, I think they do a great job. I think the makeup and stuff, was that, that was great. Um, I don't see where that could be any better. Yeah, I think the stuff we said is really where it, it could and should be plussed up. And then, you know, you have other, more, even more higher level ideas. We touched on it for a moment. And we said we'd come back to it, but what about a future event where all the houses interact? Where, like, you know, all houses in, in the event tell a larger story. Uh, you know, what about that as a future Halloween Horror Nights? You know, plus it up more. 
The bottom line is, I just, I feel that this is Universal, and this is 2016, and we've gotten what we've gotten, and the competition, which would be the regional parks, uh, not that they're directly competing with them, but just, it's other stuff that's out there, has now caught up to a certain point, and I think it's time for Universal to take some steps and do something bigger, and, and try something more. Go crazy with the 4D effects. Even just one house, try it. See how it works one year. Do one that's just like every scene has a fourth dimension effect. Just pound you with it. See what happens. See how people react. Take surveys after the fact. Whatever. But at least give it a shot because I think the same old formula, it's great, but I think it, it, it could be better. So why not make it better? That's just one guy's opinion. But, you know, in the end, they'll do what they do. In the end, they're making, they're raking it in. So, I mean, right now, yeah. I guess they're living under that if it ain't broke, don't fix it kind of thing. Yeah, but, pretty much. But that could be a dangerous mentality, too. And that's sort of, it's, it's ironic, but that's sort of what Disney does with everything else. You know, Disney is the top guy in theme parks in general. And they have that mentality. And whereas Universal is like the scrappy up and comer that's trying to dethrone them. And then, but when it comes to Halloween events, Univers that's the one area where Universal is the top dog. They're right. the, the undisputed king. And it's ironic that they sort of almost have a little bit of a Disney mentality, it seems. Again, don't know yes. for sure, but it seems where they're a little complacent, they're resting on their laurels a little bit right now, and they're not maybe taking chances or doing advancements as much as they should be. Just as much as I feel like Disney's on the way, on the decline with what they're doing, and they should shake things up, um, and right now they're not, uh, I th and that's just in general operations for the rest of the year, I think with Halloween, I think Universal, maybe it's about time for a little shaking of things up. And I'm saying that after only going once, I know, but it's because I've gone to Halloween events all over the rest of the country for the last, uh, since 99, so 17 years. And I can even throw in a bunch of other independent local houses outside of parks that I've done, too. I just think that they really should look into starting to plus it up a little more. But I know as they got a hardcore group of fans, and I'm sure it's one of those things. It's you damn if you do, damn if you don't. If they do change things up and do it a radically different way one year, a lot of their hardcore fans will probably reject it and be like, why are they doing this? What is going on? They've lost their minds. This is awful. I want what I used to get. So it's a double-edged sword. I mean, it is what it is, but... But overall, it was great. I really enjoyed it. I'm so glad we did it. They do a lot of great things, but at the same time, I could see a lot of room for improvement. It's like you said, it, with especially the Cedar Fair Parks and the Honda Graveyard at Lake Compounds, the competition is not as far behind as maybe they think it is. I don't know. They're not really going to find themselves but, like no, the thing is, falling it's, behind. It, it's Central Florida. Because, and that's right, where everybody goes. They, they've really, yeah. I mean, the, the, the big horror people, because really the people that go to this event are not even necessarily theme park people. It's just like people that are huge fans of Halloween and horror. Oh, yeah. There were so many people so, that were just in like horror shirts. They yeah. just had their, their horror gear on, whatever they wanted to push. Sometimes it's a movie. Sometimes it was just a general generic thing. Right. But it was just horror shirts. So these people are going to are gonna latch on to this no matter what. Um, well, this but, is the but place I definitely to go. see room for improvement here. It's not a, a, a perfect thing at all. No, it's interesting. It's like, yeah, if you take the country as a whole, it is where then you see you know competition, so to speak, as being closer and that sort of thing. Um, but yet, they're, they are in a unique position of being what they are. They're a destination place. You know, them and Disney together now are. It, it's it's a powerhouse that can't be rivaled. You know, really, it's like as long as they're doing what they need to do to keep the core fans happy, which they are right now, I guess they're fine. Because most of the core fans aren't going to King's Dominion or... And they're certainly, again, like we said earlier, they certainly aren't going to Lake Compounds. Right. No one even knows that the fucking thing exists. <coughs> except for exactly, the people who yeah. live in that area of Central Connecticut. But if you know, it's like, it is weird because you have this knowledge that there's something out there that's pretty fucking close. Yeah, it's probably closer, very comparable. Probably closer than it should be. Yes. And has never been a part of a DVD or a travel channel or special or anything. And never been mentioned on anyone's list or anywhere. And yet it is there. And it is it is weird just to know that. Right. When you're one of the ones who are in the know, it's like, wow, this is really weird. And that's a good segue into uh, very, very quickly, we, we, I think we should go through the, uh, the shows and the scare zones. 
one of the shows they had this year, which was, what was it, Madman's Breakout? No, it doesn't sound right. What was it called? Give me the name. Academy of Villains. There you go. House of Fear. Okay. You were way off. <laughs> right. I was not even close. I know this show has been getting rave reviews this year. Has it? Uh, yes, it has. If you have gone to any regional park, <laughs> if you've gone to any Six Flags or Cedar Fair For park, Halloween. Halloween. Right. Then you know that this is extremely typical <laughs> of that type of, of, a, uh, of, an, of an event. This show uh, seems really beneath Halloween Horror Nights. It's just people singing and dancing to, uh, like, Bohemian Rhapsody and uh, who knows whatever the hell else. It was, it was really bad. I think it was, it was Bohemian Rhapsody, but there was some other more contemporary songs, I yeah. believe, is what it was. But there was a couple cool... We didn't see the whole thing. We saw most of it. Well, maybe a third of it. We saw we saw a lot of Like it. the last third we of it or We so. definitely saw enough to understand what it was, though. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that I know. But um, there was a neat scene where uh, they were kind of uh, fighting behind a curtain... So it was like the silhouettes were kind of... So it was all about like a stunt show. And that was like okay, but then they didn't really continue with that. And then, yeah, it went very song and dancey right after that in the next scene. And then the finale, it just never really went back. So yeah, it definitely seemed like it was more of a song and dance than anything else. It does try to tell a bit of a story, I think, but it was, it was weak and loose. And I see what you're saying. I know what I said at the time was... This was my rationale for it. And again, I don't know for sure. I feel that Halloween Horror Nights may have innovated that that show, what that is. And then I think what happened Maybe. was the regionals uh, copied it. So the Dead Man's Party, which we've seen you know, we've seen so many times at Great Adventure, I think might just be like they took that off of what Halloween Horror Nights was doing. Uh, the problem is we saw all those first, and then when you see it there, it seems kind of like, why are they doing something so weak and so typical to a regional? Whereas maybe they kind of started it. You know, maybe they didn't, but maybe they did. So, that's from, just one, from what one I understand, thought. this is a rotating show. So I don't know if they started this. Oh, um, they but, don't always have this every year. Well, that makes it even worse. Then I, I mean, in the end, I know what you're getting at, though, and this goes back to the the larger point of them maybe needing to change up some things, regardless of who started started it. They shouldn't necessarily be doing something. Yeah, that's so. It's cheesy. Typical to it's the so regional. Fucking cheesy. That's typical to the regional parks. It's like, yeah. Because we don't like it there either. No. And it's like, yeah, it is. I don't want to see people uh, dancing, you know, with choreography to to pop tunes. I don't want to see it at the premier Halloween event. Yeah. You should be above that. They did avoid, though, the, the pitfalls. The, uh, we, we, we didn't see the beginning of the show. At least from what we saw, they didn't no do time thriller. Warp. No right? thriller. They didn't do time warp. No time warp. But they, but they but still did enough. some other pop tunes. It was close enough. And, and Bohemian Rhapsody is, close, was bad, is almost bad just one step away from yeah. those. You know, again, yeah, it's like Six Flags has been doing this forever. Yeah. You know, uh, Cedar Fair Parks have been doing this for whatever. Not ever. Seven, but eight years. For a while now, yeah. A long time. This is very old hat. Oh, yeah. You are way behind the times on this one. They really need to dump the show. Yeah, my thing with that is it, just, it should be something scary. Yeah. Or at least horror-related. And yeah, it is lame, and you would have thought that Universal would have done something better than that. <laughs> of so, course, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was unfortunate. Because but. even interacting with, like, the screen... That was the know, best part they had, but... It's like, but they did that with Ghoul Master's that, Ghost, yeah. that Six Flags Red Adventure. That was Ghoul Master's Ghost. We did cover that on the show, I believe, right? Yes. Yeah. Definitely did. And I, that's what I thought. I thought it was almost like it was a poor man's Ghoul Master's Ghost. And Ghoul Master's Ghost was actually done better. Because that's actually a better show. I yes. would have rather have seen that than that Academy of Villains. Believe it or not, Slax actually hired a troop that put on a better show than yeah. what Halloween Horror Nights hired. Or, or did. I guess they do it themselves. Yeah. Halloween yeah. Horror Nights. But still, it's, it's weak. But as again, I think they don't really care because they don't. They're not competing with people who are going a great adventure, right. you know. They, they they're kind of in their but own bubble, but it, it's good, exactly which is that's good, the thing, which is good and bad. It's like it's good for them that they have a, a constant revenue stream, I guess, no matter what. At least for now, it's questionable whether they're pulling in younger people because of this older crowd that we saw. But at least for now, they're insulated. But it's also bad when people like us come after so many years, after seeing the country as a whole, and then now it's like, ah, oh, shit. Some of this stuff is a little too similar. Yeah, like I was hoping to be a little more like different in every way. I wanted yeah. to see something that I'd never seen before around every corner, and instead it was like maybe around every three or four corners, and then a lot of the <laughs> other corners were a lot of the same stuff. 
Maybe done better, but still a lot of the same stuff. You know, maybe it's being a little harsh, but why not? What else am I gonna do? Right. I mean, and you the are the the un undisputed like premier event, so I don't think we're nitpicking unfairly. And then the other show is really supposed to be all be comedy, which is the Bill and Ted. Both of us have heard nothing but rave reviews about this show oh, going yeah, into it. I've never it. seen anything that wasn't positive about it. Right. And um, it was a big, it was an event. You, you got there 30 minutes prior to showtime. That was a tip that was laid on us. It's also in the guide, too, if, when you get there. And the, the actual guide has it in there. It seems like every show fills the entire stadium. Oh, yeah. You know, or whatever, the, theater. It's not quite a stadium, but it's... <laughs> theater, it, yeah. It's the former... It was originally the Wild West. The Wild, Wild, Wild West Sun Show yep. in Florida next to Men in Black. Uh, more recently now, it's the Fear Factor. They do a great job of disguising it, too. They totally cover, like, the set. Oh, yeah. Like, you don't see any of the Fear Factor shit, which is... That's, that's kind of nice. Yeah, they packed the thing in, man. I, mean, I couldn't believe how full that thing was. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, you know, I can't really say it was bad. It was, it was fine... It just wasn't exactly what I needed to see. I guess. <laughs> you know? You know, for the big event that the show was, I like that it did feel... It sounded like... I, I mentioned how the, the whole thing feels like a big event. And, like, this was sort of like the big event within the big event. Because this was a, a, a kind of a smaller uh, sub-event within the big event that also felt big because you had to wait for it. And then everybody... It's like a running of the, mini running of the bulls into the thing, and, you know, to get to your seat, and then the whole thing. I was entertained. I had no problem with it. Essentially, it, it, to me, it just played like uh, Saturday Night Live, with a little, with a few edgier jokes thrown in here and there that you wouldn't see on Saturday Night Live. Mm. Um, it almost kind of reminded me of the other edgier things. Reminded me of uh, classic Married with Children. You know, back at a in an edgier time when you're allowed to be a little more edgier on TV, or at least Fox was willing to do it back then in the in the '90s. And then there's a few jokes that I thought maybe you'd see on that. And then that was about it. You know, it was it was fine. It was everything, I guess, that it was supposed to be. I don't feel, like, cheated by it. You know, that's what it was, it was supposed to be, an endless string of pop culture gags. And that's exactly what it was. You know, I didn't expect them to tell the story of Bill and Ted. I knew they weren't doing that. It could be anyone hosting the show. Oh, uh, the yes. The fact that it's Bill it and Ted. Anybody, like, yes. I really have no idea. I didn't read up on the history. I have no idea. Maybe the first couple of times they did it, it did sort of tell their story. I don't know. Or maybe it never did. But well, they, this, this regardless was the of 25th anniversary, so you, you have to think. They started this in 1991, which was when Bogus Journey came out. Oh, so yeah, they were very relevant then. So I don't know. I don't know why they chose them in the first place. Maybe it made sense at one time, 25 years ago. But, you know, now it's just incidental. The fact that it's those characters that they're portraying on the stage. The two guys do a good job. They come off kind of like those the, the two guys, Keanu Reeves and the other guy that never went anywhere. Alex Winter? Alex Winter, sure. <laughs> if that's what you say, <laughs> I'll believe you. Um, he never went anywhere, right? No. Yeah, no, okay. he did. Um, and yeah, it's fine. It's fun. I did laugh a few times. Um, for me, it was the event of it. I was into it. If I, I was watching that on TV... I probably would have turned it off like halfway through, to be honest. The fact that I was there live and everyone else was so into it and it was they were laughing and then they were wooing and then they were um, cheering and then clapping and whatever. That kept me going. Because there was so much energy in that theater that that was what made it fun, I thought. I wouldn't pay just for that. If that was just the only thing I was paying to go do one night, I wouldn't do it. But as part of Halloween Horror Nights, as the part of the greater event, which I really thoroughly enjoyed, it was fine. I would go so far as to say I probably would see it again on a subsequent return, just to do it. Well, I mean, talk about if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, yeah, but they, they've been running this horse for 25 years, uh, just making fun of pop culture. Not really my kind of humor. I uh, did not really enjoy the show very much, honestly. The uh, some of the jokes went over my head, I guess, because I just don't want to keep up with pop culture. But um, the best part for me was uh, the end when they had the tribute to uh, Bowie and Prince. Th that was nice. That was actually kind of moving, and felt like a celebration of of, of those guys um, and their music. Oh, the end was very celebratory. Yeah, yeah, that 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 was very cool. Uh, See, I thought the end was good because it was like, it was not Dead Man's Party. Yes, it was very right. like something else. It just felt like a fun show that I was watching, and I just was able to enjoy it for what it was. Yeah. Uh, th th that moved me. Uh, but the rest of the show, I thought, was 
was, you know, I mean, it, it was it was like trash, but I understand it's supposed to be trashy. Uh, that's that's kind of the motif they're going for, and that's fine. Uh, you know, I don't really have a problem. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna fine. I'm not gonna say it's you know it's bad or they shouldn't do it or anything like that. Uh, that's fine. You know, they do their own thing. Uh, it's just not necessarily my kind of humor. That's all. Yeah, I I appreciate that it was edgy. I'm just glad they're doing it because at this point where everything's becoming so overly politically correct. I do enjoy anyone that kind of sticks it to that and says, <laughs> fuck you, we're still doing this like it's 1990. Yeah, that is and cool, And I yeah. do like that. So for that reason alone, I hope they keep doing this for another 25 years. And we're not really going to go through the scare zones. I mean, they were all like pretty good. Uh, I just want to say Fisherman's Wharf was my favorite one in particular. Uh, a lot of fog. I love the lightning effect. I love the costumes and the makeup. Oh, the black lit helmets. That was very cool. Uh, I would go so far it. as to say I'd love to see that in house form. Uh, yeah, that that would that was, would work. I very think it was well. strong enough to do that, to go full house with that. Yep. And I even told him I said uh, best scare zone, and one guy you, acknowledged the last guy that we encountered on the way out of it the last time. Yes, and he did. He broke character for uh, just a moment, and he gave you a little nod. He like, gave me, he gave me oh a nod. yeah, yes. I know where the best scare zone, motherfucker. Yes, that was the best scare zone. Uh, but I mean, all the scare zones are very good. Uh, They're all very good. Interesting things they did, like the chainsaw geishas. That was just weird. That was just weird. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> Harry's Chain pets. Weird. Exactly. It's like chainsaw geishas. Weird. <laughs> um, that was weird. Coupled with chainsaw scarecrow guys right next to them in the next area. Yeah. I don't know um, that, that banshee one was pretty cool. Chainsaw cheerleaders were in Springfield. Uh, it made no sense. They were whatsoever. just okay. Yeah. And then. Um, I mean, they did a good job for it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the apocalypse thing was cool. They had a car that roomed around a guy on a megaphone. The up apocalypse on a platform. thing, they did little occasional, like, resets of the zone where they would cuddle. They'd get yeah. into a huddle, and then they'd do, like, a, a, a disperse mid through the crowd, and they'd really go crazy on you. And yeah. that was really cool. And that, and then the projections. Yeah. They made it look like the buildings right in that corner of that New York, of New York Street um, were crumbling. Yeah. With projection. And it I worked mean, pretty well. It was a reasonably it good It was all right. Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah, the, the thing with the uh, the chainsaw guys coming together and then dispersing, I did see that in Springfield 2, uh, just to be oh, fair. Okay. Uh, but yeah, that was that was the thing. Oh, one thing I gotta say. Too many chainsaws. <laughs> you, guys chainsaws. Gotta, you guys gotta scale back on the chainsaws. Chainsaws? I don't I, like, I like him in everything. Chainsaws. But um, you had chainsaw geishas, you had chainsaw scarecrows, slash scarecrows, you had chainsaw cheerleader guys, and you had Texas Chainsaw Massacre, which was filled with chainsaws. Yeah. You got to scale back on the chainsaws. There was a lot. There was a few too many chainsaws in the overall event. Yes. Yeah. I, I yeah. We both thought that same thing. I know that's your thing that you become famous for that, but you got to cut back on that. Yeah. Too bit. many chainsaws. Uh, mix it up. They didn't have shovel guys. They didn't have chain right. guys. They didn't have the guys with the knee pads, metal knee pads, scraping the ground. Right. And All stuff well, we've seen at Halloween Haunt events that they did not yeah. have here. Right. No shaker cans. No shaker um, cans, yeah. I, you know, I, I think we figured, you know, they don't want them scraping the ground because the pavement I thought of is that. just too nice. They don't want to screw that up. It's a little different than their classic Cedar Fair Park. Right, where that. it's just concrete, straight concrete. Yeah. This is like they don't want to mess the pavement up, perhaps, but yeah. I don't know. They should have figured out something, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's Even funny. Even like a yeah. washboard thing. or I've seen, we've seen yeah. a lot of different gags over the years. They didn't have anything like that. Just chainsaws constantly. Right. There are so some things. It's a little bit like one note. Yeah, that the regional parks actually do that Home and Harness does not do. Yeah, which is interesting. And I think they should uh, work it in more. Um, or maybe they have in the past, but then why take it out if you did? I Just, just mix it up every year, I think. Yeah. Whatever. But so, um, uh, anyway, that was that. Uh, so Again, that was it. I mean, the, the, the event was great. The, uh, the last couple points I wanted to make... Towards the end of that second night we were there, which was a s Friday night, uh, it got really rowdy. <laughs> yeah. More rowdy than I ever thought a Universal Park or any Central Florida Park could get. And that was a little weird. It was like riding. We rode Mummy that night toward the end to get our last ride of the of the trip in. And um, it was weird. It, it was kind of like being a late night uh, at a Six Flags Park. Yes. The way it, That's right. It, Halloween Horror Nights turns into a Six Flags crowd. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. Yeah, and so that was a little weird. Um, I mean, I'm okay with it, I guess. I understand yeah, well, it. because we're used to it. It's a necessary evil, and we're used to it anyway, so it didn't really bother us that much. You know, we're from New York. Everyone here is a fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, yes, folks, believe the believe the stereotypes. It's true. <laughs> uh, everyone around this area of New York is kind of a dick, but um, uh, we're included. That's why we're the, that's why we're the coaster dicks, of course. <laughs> And then the other thing is, uh, about to go back about the crowd uh, skewing older, at least when we were there, and this also plays into what I, th I think they should start doing some things new for the future, 
if under 25 is, or even mostly under 30 isn't even really going, and it's, it's the same audience that just keeps growing with the event, eventually they'll get too old, or they'll be phased out, and I feel like, you know, it's just going to continue on forever. Or it's just have a shelf life. Because, I don't know, I, 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 younger generations, they, they're just too staring at their phones all the time and shit, that they're just not even going out for things like this? Is it even like a, ha a haunted event not what they would be into? I, I don't know. Yeah. I hope not. And, and maybe they need to do some things. I guess they're starting. The, the first inkling is the repository, which we actually didn't see. I didn't even know what the fuck they were doing it. I didn't see any yeah, signs or anything. Know. I heard two people talking when we were still in the holding area the first night. Two of the employees talking, saying how it was the fir that was the first night of it. Ah. And if you don't know what the repository is, it's the VR haunt experience that they're yeah. doing. Virtual reality. Yeah, new thing. So, I guess that's the beginning of a next-gen thing, but the problem with that I have is, like, Cedar Fair is doing it the same year you are. That's right. Or at least they tried to do it, and then now they're not doing it, but that's a whole other story. Yeah. But, um, so even that's not totally on the cutting edge, because regional parks are doing it at the same time you are. So I still, I don't know, I still have a problem with, I still think they need to be thinking outside the box more than they are. And I hope they do. Yeah. And, you know, and I'm sure they will, because Universal has proven to be nothing but on the edge and and they're they're go-getters over there oh <laughs> they're they going are for yeah. it and that's something we'll talk about on future episodes as well talk about hitting home runs they are going they're swinging for the fences uh in every way shape or form beyond halloween uh just in the regular park operation and that's an inter interesting thing to think too i wonder if the overall resort plans that they may have like some kind of master 10 or 20 year plan may not include Halloween Horror Nights, or it's like they may outgrow it. You know, I feel like they, they, there's a master plan out there where they're they're looking to become the next Disney, and that may not they may not want to have these edgy events anymore. They may eventually want to edge that out. So that's just another thought. Uh, I wonder if if it goes on forever or not. But uh, I'm glad we finally got to do it. And uh, you know, the the best thing about it, the best compliment I can give it is when we were done. Right away, I was thinking, when am I going to do this again? Yeah. And that's different than most of the Halloween events. Maybe Kings Dominion kind of got that. It was the first time I kind of got that. Well, Lake Compounds, too. I've had it a couple times already, but to be fair. But still, this gave me that feeling. So that was, that was, that was a pleasant surprise on my part. It felt like a dream. It really did. It's a dream. Yeah, it was. Or a nightmare. I can't believe as that. They, they want you to say. Yeah, I can't believe I did it. I can't believe we did it. It's yeah. really weird to me, still. it's It was pretty fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. it really was. And uh, the overall experience is great. Uh, sure, sure, I mean, it goes without saying. If, if you haven't done it, you should do it. Yeah. Do it. Uh, absolutely Try and get do it. there, yeah. And, uh, hey, you know, I, I definitely know I'm going to try to figure out one of these days. It may not be right away next year or whatever. Because <laughs> you know, we are up in New York, and it is, it's not so easy to just, just up and do it. But it's not so difficult either, so it's like, I, you know, I definitely want to check it out again. And I think having a second year to experience it and compare will make it even that much more interesting. Oh, I yeah. Think. You know, this was obviously more, mostly just comparing to the other events we've done. I hope we've given you some interesting insight into the whole thing. All right, well, ha happy Halloween, everybody. Happy ha Halloween. Ha happy Halloween. Stay tuned for... Other Florida reviews. We're going to review all the other stuff that was uh, new to us for uh, this time around. We did Legoland for the first time ever. Legoland Florida. We did Wet and Wild. We got the last splash. It was our first splash and our last splash. <laughs> at Wet and Wild. All in one. We did that. We'll talk about that in a future episode. We did... Uh, we got a lot of stuff. We got Cobra's Curse. We got Falcon's oh, the, Fury. The new rides at Busch Gardens Tampa. The We've new rides got, at... Uh, We've Bring got Gringotts. We've uh, got King Kong, Skull Island, Reign of, Reign of Kong. We've got a lot of stuff coming up for you. Yeah, so we're going to get into all that in the next few episodes. So stay tuned. Thanks for riding. Yeah. Turn through me. <laughs> <laughs>